name. Uh, it was a long name. I don't know his name, but he played like Hagar double set in one time. It was great. But anyways, okay. So yeah, disruptor and drones on top of Marvel Two Sentinel. I, this might be right. borderline cheating. Yeah, disruptor just adds a lot more firepower to this already fast character by just giving them an assist and their ability to redirect and or relocate themselves. Plus Absolutely. double drones, double drones. <laughs> And look at that, just zoning with drones. He's going to have just a steady wave. One of the drones overlapped. And now Shogundos is trying to figure out how to deal with this. But Jeep catch a base sentinel there. So he's able to kind of consistently disrupt. So, But once Joker uh, starts to counter call it, we might, be, we might be seeing more sentinel all the time. One thing, though. Um, mm -hmm. In my opinion, beam assists are best for Jean because it accesses her amazing teleport game, and Wolby is another character who can benefit a lot from having a decent beam behind him. Yeah. But uh, I just realized he was maybe one dash away from getting uh, getting Shockwave into uh, the Berserker Barrage pickup, which is kind of nutty. So I like the synergy behind that, but unfortunately Wolverine goes down a Jean Grey. Oh my god, the disrupt uh, what was the disruptor? The dis I don't know. That was a corpse hop setup, and it was disgusting. That was illegal. Ooh, that was cheap. Oh, my God. Double used drones with Paul. Yeah, he uh, used x Factor to try to guess, and he guessed right, but there was another mix-up incoming. So, Koger takes game one right there. And, uh, quite dominating. It was uh, took a little while to get the, get the wheels going, but... Yeah, now Shogundo's probably maybe. Oh no, the sets go go rematch. Just spend a little time there to just to chill. So this team has the tools. It's very much just adapting to how crazy the offense is coming off of Joker. He's yeah. more of a passive player sometimes. He really likes the air control. But this team just unlocks his aggressive nature so well. Yeah, that's that's true too. It's just it's just what really just confuses me is just like being able to combo off of your jumping s like one of uh one of the few characters that can do that in midair like it doesn't like cause a hard knockdown it just causes just a little like sent distance back so he's able to confirm with, with medium and then just continue with the combos my and look at that instant overhead just being able to have really quick flights I can't believe this character is getting a uh, better scaling in patch down the road. Oh god! I mean, it's it's also the case that Joker is one of the few people who can viably play base roster Sentinels still in the game. That's also so he may amplify characters of this archetype a lot more than they appear. Yeah, that's true. But he is you probably our best Sentinel pilot. Yeah, in this community. Bigot robot Gundam finally getting hit. I forgot he's a bigot. Yeah. I always forget about that, that they're only there to eliminate mutants, right? Yep. Okay. This is a great way to magic come... Almost was a great way to magic come back, but still has Psyche on the back. And Mr. Summers, like, he can chip big bodies, and there's very little they can do to stop him. Not nothing, apparently. Should be done... Yeah. I was gonna say he does have those uh, those extensions. It's getting late for me. I still want to enjoy some good old Marvel. It's, it's eleven over here in Newfoundland or Newfoundland or New Newfoundland or wherever, really. So yeah, Joker has to stick with his team. Has to stick with the same assists as well, I believe. Uh, positioning it can be a bit different if you wanted to, but we're going with Point Jean Grey. We're going to probably go with the Cyclops Ops? with the beam assist and then the Psylocke with the DP. Yeah. Oh, double anti-air assist is this? No, I uh Which one's the He doesn't have Jean Splice. He doesn't. He does I'll not. Wait for just a second. Optic blast, you got. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the green is the uh because I think the only person that does double DP is uh, is Edson Diet, and he, I think he could be switching soon, but that's what we might have said. But, okay. So, I don't know how this team is going to really fare, um, although Gene does look cool in that super suit of hers. Gonna do switch. It. <laughs> yep. Oh my goodness. Oh my. It decides not to uh, continue it. 
because he didn't have enough meter. And it's kind of awkward to kind of confirm from there anyways. So, oh no, whips the crouching medium there. And Joker just going to be able to go to town slowly but surely. Look at all that APM required to do 400k damage. Oh my goodness. Maybe that's Tab's reasoning behind uh, changing the scaling. But my goodness. Hyper Sentinel Force. Magnetic Shockwave. Going to use the downwards one. Doesn't matter. Okay, good catch there. Traction does the same mix up, good block. And he might lose Magneto for this. Oh no, a little Wait. bit too slow. Even X Factors, yeah, X Factors to try to keep her safe, but just, just gets scooped for Trouble's unfortunate drop and does get the catch off of the Psylocke assist. So at least there's that. Sentinel eating an overhead there. Surprise, now it's Vanilla Sentinel, the Mr. Big Body, coming out and now. That's this two bars. That's enough to kill, it's... I think. Now, that's what I'm wondering, too. Is it going to be... I don't think it's going to be enough. Maybe if that was able to extend. But... I think the play would have been call Psylocke assist and then team hyper to get shockwave of Cyclops. Cyclops dead. Oh, I'm dumb. All right. <laughs> no, no worries. It's, uh, it's late. And, oh, field goal. The kick is good. Field goal attempt now. It's... Tries to get him away with Shockwave, but it's not enough. And Joker... Joker takes the 3-0, but it was like a weird checkmate. The, the Hyper Sentinels dropped, but... Wasn't able to survive the chip. And maybe Shogundo thought he was dead too, so... That's it. But now, up next... We have the other brother. I believe the older brother of Joker. Using that as the primary cell with Phoenix. So, already ready to play with two characters and see what happens. Oh, she was swinging there. Missile's coming out. And the Dark Matter gets the bounce. The shot's coming through. Looks like Jean Grey is in a terrifying situation. Uh, Shockwave going to get the hit, but it lets her get out safely. Very important. The backside of the assist catching Guile there. One thing you have to worry about with Guile is that Dorm has some outright projectile canceling moves, so it doesn't matter how durable those booms will be. This is true. Oh, and this is looking... One, only one hit of the uh, Stocky Flare got through Sonic Hurricane? We take okay. those. You always take those. Okay, uh, today I learned. <laughs> but what Guile's about to learn is what the lot variant boot tastes like. It is going to be the end of this American warrior, and now Dean's gonna have to deal with this stocking flare on incoming. Gorilla life. Oh, the layers. He got caught. Was not ready for the unblockable setup, and with that, Noel setting up again, gets another flame carpet down. And this time was ready for it, managed to get through with X Factor. Oh, that is scary. Both players in terrifying situations managed to get around, but then the meteors still managed to catch. Ooh, the dive kick, just avoiding that foot dive there. Oh, but Noel getting the confirm. This is going to be the end of Stars Jill. Uh, goes through with the combo, has the HD available in the Dormammu. Easy finish here, and we'll see how Renard needs to adapt in order to fight off the power of Noel the Hunk. He's going out on a limb, but I think Noel likes this assist a lot from Wesker. It, it's pretty helpful. Oh, getting some nonsense on screen. Getting the orb out is quite good, but let's see. Missiles? Please. Ooh, nice job catching her out of that teleport. Noel was ready for it. Has killed off Dean potentially, or at least done a lot of damage. No, no, killed her off entirely. Okay, looks like this is going to be Guile's team starting. Does he get the opportunity to play? Instead, it looks like Guile's about to be evaporated, sent to the dark dimension. There's no American flags there. And he's got a full liberation should he need it. Renard has to adjust carefully to deal with the circumstance. Not anymore. 
Okay, let's see what's done to try and fight here. Oh, gets the try jump fish hook, and with that, going the kill off Star's build, Noel going up 2-0 over Renard in this set. Renard's gonna have to dig deep to try and figure out how to deal with the storm. I feel like uh, it may be beneficial to do some more flash kicks because they really cover- Oh, decides to start the Guile instead of the Gene. Because uh, we see that there's all of this nonsense that Dorm does up in the air, and all of that can be some level of managed by Guile, and most characters do not get to manage it very well. Ooh, bringing in the Wesker. Uh, does okay. that shield work on missiles? I've never actually checked that. Uh, yes, the shield will eat missiles. Shield will eat lots of things. Uh, there are some things that hit it which uh, feel frustrating, and sometimes it has weird interactions with certain types of projectiles that move at high speeds, like Titan. Oh, for the simple. The THC? Oh, incendiary grenade out on the ground, but no, it looks like Jean at the pixel of life. Will she be able to do something with it? She will not. Now it's all up to Guile Star still. Look in this last set, we're seeing Renard really coming alive. The reflexes are really tight on some of these interactions. And they're just barely getting caught out by Noel on a lot of these exchanges. Oh, and this is definitely gonna be the end of Dormammu, and I feel like if the opportunity to hit Doom occurs, just use all the resources to kill Doom. Like that, he foot dives, and there's an answer to foot dive in this character. It's called Black Doom. Ooh, that's some cheap stuff right there. It is. What do you do with Doom when he just keeps kicking? Yeah, Flash Kick is kind of an entirely busted move, but it's fine. Uh, He's only got two so, moves. But no, Pixel, Pixel Wesker here is going to die. Renard doing America proud by putting himself one up on the board. Noel immediately like, okay, Dormammu and Doom were working out is... Is the star's Wesker still a choice? Oh, I like that color for Dormammu. Mm -hmm. like like, oh, the Lilith's the coming out. Is exactly that color. Um... I think that's relatively similar. To, no, ice plants are a little bit more saturated and a little bit more magenta. The Queen Anne's lace. I don't know. I am not flower educated. Chat, are any of you botanists out there or flowering for other people who have the tech on flower knowledge? Those are white. Um, never cone flower? Yeah, it's cone flower. That's the one that's that, like, put a whitey shiny cake. Oh, and the flash kick. I think flash kick is just like very solid against a lot of the things that Noelle wants to do. Oh, uh, I'm not sure if uh, Noel quite understands how little assist works. So it gets you health back as opposed to getting you this absurd amount of meter that Dark Harmonizer does. So it's getting a very different reward. It's still very good for Dormammu though. Is the longer you can liberate, the more just incidental chip and meter build you can get. But Bernard has definitely made a substantial adjustment about how to approach when Dormammu is putting nonsense on the screen. Oh no, Noel trying to figure out how Lilith works, but also not respecting the incendiary grenades. Gene comes out before 5 meters, Noel is like, can't even do this. Uh, let's see if there's going to be the opportunity to make this work with Gene. Oh no, it's all up to Lilith and this is... Oh, it is not even up to Lilith. Okay, the Doom is coming back instantly. Okay, so Pepto Bismol, uh, Doom, Coneflower, uh, Torum, and. Oh, yeah, there, there's the Gene Grey. Okay, I. 
I would play this team with Dean on point and then Dorm in the middle and do that. But Noel just going to try things out. His Dorm Doom has definitely been a threat. But looks like uh, Renard back to starting the Dean, even though it had a very good success with that dial. Uh, immediately goes back in. Because, uh, like, Flash Kick covers this angle up here that uh, Dorm's doing stuff from. Yeah, once Dormammu actually starts to get the advantage state, he can suppress Guile really well by combining these purification with the liberation meters. But it's just getting into that phase. Ooh, has been doing really well here, and this is likely the end of Dean. Not quite. She has another chance, but it's not for very long. Noelle is going to kill off his Dean, and now gets the full screen with Dormammu, has meteors available. Looks like Guile here. It has been able to get some damage, but it's now gone. It's all up to Anchor Star's Bill. Let's see if Noelle is ready for her. Oh no, meteors are coming out, or missiles are. That is that is not the, the situation. Oh no, trying to learn how to move with Jean. Her combos are, are different from regular Phoenix, so uh, Noelle looking like he's trying to figure out on the fly. Doom getting shot pretty substantially. Uh, is down to a little under half health. Ooh, and this is potentially the end of Doom. And now it's looking like Dean's going to go down. This is looking very possible for Inard to bring it all the way back. Use this level 2 so he has the better mix. Great catch. Doom just bleeding here, but he's so close to being chipped with a Chaotic Flame. Oh. Oh, X, please X, and blocked it. That is exactly what was needed there. But Noel clutch in the last moments takes it to Dormammu, going up over an R three to two. Nice stuff to both players. That was a very interesting match. Is watching Noel's brain working on the fly to figure out how characters work. Teleport Thanos has not been released yet. So. We'll see. Anyways. Hard, uh, at least initially, if you can let Ultron get away from Thanos, it's a bit hard to keep up. But this is what Carlos wants, and he is starting the party hard. Absolutely. Gonna get the knockdown. Misses the DP assist there. Just couldn't get the crouching heavy in time. And just hits him with the raw beam super. That might have been accidental. But using the rapid slash assist as a, uh, as a rush, multi-hitting rush down assist, I like that idea. Unfortunately, misses the, the ground bounce dive there. It's just puts him away. This is what, exactly what you said. Uh, he has to find a way to get in now. And what better way to do that than with Zero Soul Genmu? This is interesting in itself. This is the major school of um, both Joker and Carlos. Like, use Zero for his utility options. Very strong point, but his DHG routes aren't great. His ability to tag off of other hypers using Sogenmu, amazing. And he can do a lot of cleanup when he gets a nice sneak in like this. Also, thank you, Fetus, for gifting a sub to our friend Zeno. I felt like you should have gave that to me. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> pseudo unblockable. Yeah, that was that was disgusting. Not as bad as my comment, but still crazy. Uh, this is unfortunately though with the TAC, and now you're giving Virgil a chance at life here, but. You know, that's just the name of the game, Tim. Just, uh, you know, unfortunate drops. And, yeah, that's going to come out. At, yeah, that's going to beat Thanos. Now it's just back to zero and missiles. Ultron is looking kind of grim. Virgil, if he's able to recover enough HP. If he's recover, if he's able to recover his red health, he's going to be able to be at, like, maybe like, I don't know, 50%. So, not A double the point greatest. Chain. Until you finally kill Zero, you really can't say that you've managed to quash this team. Because that's the advantage of a double point scenario. Even though Doom, a good anchor, I don't think I could use the word best anchor, but. I uh, I got called. I got to go. But you best like leave. I'll be right back. <laughs> now immediately going to go for a stable route. Has the adjustment for X Factor. And look at the damage. So again, move all it's going to need an X. Oof. Carlos turning it around on a dime. 
King Carlos, incredibly threatening, whether working with base roster or characters from the modded environment. Let's see what Exodai does to that. Another strong starter. I mean, Thanos has been opening every one of these parties. He just can't finish. Looks like this is going to be Thanos getting out with more than half of his life left. A good hit on either of them is going to lead into death here. But it looks like Ed's diet is ready to hit with the backside of that air S. Be able to confirm into a dead Thanos. For damage, and that'll be enough. Thing, and the Hot Avengers baiting out, you know, saying that if they land the level 3, the Mod Sword is still waiting for them. But the sword that needs to be worried about now is the Zero Z Saber. Uh, how do you feel about the Zero Ultron matchup? Uh, his death rays are pretty powerful and will actually deal with Buster substantially better than most things. But uh, if you're in hit stun and Zero's hitting you, it's not good for any character in this game. I think Ultron has the tool to deal Zero, but I think his flight makes him a bit more vulnerable than some of the dashers and just getting tagged by projectiles or big hitboxes. Mm. Oh, let's see, Ed Sedai. Uh, the X-Factor's burning down. King Carlos still has their resources, and now X-Factor out for Ed Sedai. Going to just be a substantial amount of tip here. Lost the vast majority of Virgil, and almost lost Cyclops as well. King Carlos ready to make it happen. This is the end of Cyclops, and now it's all up to Virgil. He doesn't have X Factor, but he does have almost five meters. You think he could get started in neutral? No, no getting started in neutral. Ooh, what an adjustment. I love me some Joe. Yeah, Ed Sedai, one of the refs of Beautiful Joe. Uh, and for those who don't know, the person who runs the stream, the Hall Avengers, is also a, a Joe appreciator. You can see by some of the amazing emotes he has, like the thumbs up. Oh, Fetus was already on top of it with the Joe. How do you feel about Joe versus Zero? I feel Joe and Thanos, we're, we're going to see if Counter comes into play here because uh, Counter can stop some of the more abusive strategies that Joe can do. But it looks like both of them are willing to be pretty aggressive in this situation. That's what I going in there with Joe. Mm -hmm. And I wonder where Ed's going to stop. Are they going to go for like a boomerang setup or are they just going to try and cash out as much damage as possible? Oh, but when that cube comes out, can't do that. Goes for the mock speed and actually catches Doom with it, but the Mega Optic Blast not going to catch Thanos here. The snipe on the assist. Okay. Carlos has some meter and ends up going for the beam, is going to be able to catch Beautiful Joe. And then with Sogenmu, what are they going to do to get around it? The Mega Optic Blast. Disincentivizes zero, but the double game buster is enough to get the confirmed. Cyclops is going to die for his folly. Nice adjust. Pick up assist. Ooh, never mind. There's a drop right when you don't want it. Indeed, but exactly what Ed Sedayat needs to get back in this game. His Joe's still alive, his Cyclops is alive and healing. Uh, just needs to start getting some momentum of his own in order to try and get the stone. Awesome. Joe, a great meter engine to just build a little bit more for both Cyclops and Virgil to work out things. Indeed, and even though we generally see Ed Sedai playing the Doom Splice assist for uh, his Cyclops, the double boom was able to take control of what he needed on the ground. But uh, this time he's been running off the glass for the, the Cyclops, and King Carlos moving forward has access to plenty of resources. Ed Sedai still has X Factor and that Virgil in the back but his meter is dangerously low. So even if he comes in, he only has one set of swords available. Zero yes, sets of swords. The assist, maybe? Oh, the hit on Zero. Oh no, trading up Virgil here. And gets the connection on Cyclops. Goes for the instant snap. 
going to get caught on both characters as the guy stays alive, kills off the two threats, and now all of the Thanos. And Edsidai has been doing very well against Thanos all the way leading up to this. I, I don't think this combo is going to kill, but I do think that Edsidai is just left in a position that's going to be highly favorable. Take it a little bit slow, and then yeah, sort of. Oh, gets a happy birthday? Kills off Joe, but Virgil Man just stroll out. Edsidai just needs to not get hit for another couple marble seconds. And he's- Oh, he was short enough to get under it until the last moment. Yeah, why are you fighting? Psychelic is giving the good advice in chat. It may be an all cap, but in most advice in all cap you shouldn't listen to. But Psychelic is being a homie here and saying, <laughs> Just run. You have no need to fight this character when there's six seconds left on the clock. And Beautiful Joe just slowing down this neutral and punishing any Sagemu like, setups. He's been doing really good at using the optic blast assist to clear out when Doom missiles come out. And, but then, this is a time where Queen Carlos gets the clean hit, doesn't quite get the confirm off it though. And now, uh, in this situation where even though Edsidai is down on meter, they're still in a pretty favorable position for getting this started. Ready to just realize they just couldn't keep that combo going with missiles coming down. Indeed, and that command dash down was enough. This is going to open up Edsidai, take the kill, and King Carlos has mixed up on incoming. Oh, this is looking terrifying for Ed Sedai. But they drop out. No chance the gene spikes this. No chance. The command dash low while the block stun was continued was exactly what was needed there. And gets the mix up on Virgil to make sure he doesn't become a problem. X factors at the beginning of the combo. Now he'll for sure have the meter and the easier execution on lightning loop. Now it's all up to Dark Cyclops. He's how's the Phoenix Force before? Will he be able to do it? That's very risky. Yeah, he's gonna be able to sneak by this character's tiny. Mm -hmm. And with that, King Carlos takes it 3-1 over Edsidai, sending Ed to the learner side of the bracket. Though I'm sure that Ed will be a fierce opponent down there. Let's see, what do we have coming up next? Is it going to be Renard? No, I'll be hungry. Ezra are going to take to the skies and backing with the Shadow Lady assist, I imagine. I mean, Joker is smart and adjusting to Isisera's calls. It's a, a battle that is mostly going to be held in the air, but assist going to play such a strong part in seeing who can actually keep it up. Once again, Opair is breaking roughly even, though Isisera taking this life lead and getting the last hit of Marvel Potential. There we go. One more extension here. Does Isisera have the full combo route? Going beam beam. Just going to go all the way through. Is this going to be enough after the last DHC? Isisera mashing. It's just enough. Now coming in. Going to try and channel all of this energy straight into the robot space. In between this anti-air and double beam assist configuration, this is era just putting on the pressure. Now, this is the breakout point for Joker. We are seeing this wonderful Sentinel in action. Now, all up to Shadow Lady. Can the instant air legs be enough to quickly dispatch this robot before the rest of the X Factor wears out? Easy peasy. This they're going up to one. Immediately, both players jumping to this airborne position again. Sarah claiming the initial height lead. And this is overall a smart, albeit passive way of utilizing this Modoc here. Marvel 2 Sentinel has such strong movement in the air. By just hovering at exactly the cross point for flight and throwing out the beam, Sarah can slow down 
Joker's dominating movement patterns he gets with this character. Joker adjusting right and now utilizing these tools to deal with Sarah's offense. But Beam Beam going to claim both the assist and the point potentially here. Will Isaiah go all the way through to finish it? Yes, they will. And this will be the end of Magneto. Bring it all once again on the Sentinel. But oh, a raw tag getting punished. Joker finishing the Shadow Lady. Coming to let it happen again. Setting it up to mid screen. Just wants to keep as much pressure on this Modoc as possible. Now Sarah really not taking any bait, but still gets thrown. Defensive options not enough when Joker is scheming this hard. One more central mix away from Joker taking it, but just a little too low on that hitbox. Gives Isis Terra just to pick up the initial. Being a low HP character, she can finish off Sentinel with this level 3. Here we go, up 2 for Isis Terra. Go, potentially into the last uh, winner's match for Joker here. I'm relying on this point Magneto. Already showing off what kind of adjustments Joker can make, even keeping the same team orders. Or you see this wonderful adjustment as now utilizing point Magneto we can take advantage of the double thrones and put on the pressure he needs to deal with the Moda. You know, Isis Era immediately caught in a different situation from before. No life lead to speak of. We have to put out this damage to catch up with so much HP available. And oh no. Joker finding everything he wanted and more of that exchange for this happy birthday. Just one more pickup. All it takes. Shockwave might ruin this. No perfect pickup. Now put him on the board. Joker immediately finding his legs to this point Magneto as he's just utilizing so many tools now. But Isisera's previously very strong defensive formation just isn't dealing with. With this extension, Joker going to take it to the skies. Oh, not used to the route for that, giving Isisera one more chance potentially to let this Modoc cook. But shockwave, putting in the tools, bringing back in the Magneto, just stifling this Modoc. Is there? I'm not sure if there's a great opportunity presenting itself at any point. He tagged with this DH steep on it. Will be that chance. Modoc going to get a bit of that life back on the back end and all the way through. Is this going to be enough? No, they're going to gamble on a couple quick photon blasts to finish it off, but Magneto's still alive. The threat looms ever, and a quick happy birthday again. Everything going Joker's way. Double shockwave. The microwave will finish off Captain Marvel and down to the character I can potentially at least experienced with. Can X-Factor MODOK make a comeback on this very healthy team? Not this time. Player one wins. And now we are up to a 2-2 situation. Point Magneto being all it took for Joker to turn everything around. And Sarah once again playing this mid-game with the projectile, then backing it with this defensive assist. Getting one more launcher, but once again, drones playing all the defenses they need to keep things folded together. And Joker, very confident in leaving this Magneto alive, going to throw out this X Factor. Let's see what Isisera thinks about this. Bringing in this Shadow Lady, trying to use the missiles just to run that clock, and getting a birthday of their own. Now, this is the situation Isisera can live with. Finishing off one Sentinel just as the other comes in. Now, Marvel 2 Sentinel all on their own. Is there a place Joker can make 
without X Factor to deal Ice to Sarah's full health team. Just out of range of the knockdown section of that Dino Lightning Leg hit means that Isocera has to find one more good hit before she can level 3, but this time, just utilizing strong defense and just slowly crowding out Shadow Lady. And Drum's trading favorably, almost any exchange it makes, but a quick overhead. And to set off the situation, Isocera may need to get this kill. It's going to be just short, intentional, a very healthy character. But setting up an optimal neutral situation with the final hit of those missiles. And just so little places where Joker can manage to not get completely destroyed by getting hit by either of the assist options. If there is a chance, it is in his movement, but Ice is there finding that fatal last string of lightning legs. And in a very close set, Ice is there claiming the three over Joker's two. What a match. Okay, so looks like uh, Zeno. Oh no, I think the names are switched there. because, yeah, uh, Dovalicious does not have the incentive of trying to put a mod by landing Nemesis as level 3. Also, Psychilic, myself, all uh, Fetus, every mod that is in Kevin's channel, we are lucky we did not need to land uh, the Nemesis level 3 in order to become a mod in this chat. Xeno is living the hard life that we never had to. Speaking of which, uh, light him up! He's <laughs> both the assist and almost killing Nemesis. Okay, so it looks like the attempts to level 3 are going to be thwarted this round. And with that, the TAC is broken. Maybe they will not be. You need another one there, Dobby, but uh, okay. Living the life. Oh, but he gets the throw. And with this, that was weird. Uh, bi bionic arm catches. Doesn't end up X factoring. <laughs> but uh, everything according to plan here by Zeno. Gets the side TAC into up TAC. Okay, Evil Ryu, what you gonna do? You have to fight against an X Factor team. Uh, I don't think this is one of the ones that has a degenerate Spencer THC, but I think it's still probably enough that if he sees an assist, it might be worth blowing up with that plus X Factor. And you can't just fit in the air near Spencer. That has been optimal punish when you're that low in a. This theoretically could kill Psylocke, but I don't know if you know knew the road. Definitely, like you have X Factor, Spencer, and Meter. You just need to touch them. Oh, the armored punches is yeah, Dovalicious. Yeah, just jump right? away. It's a bait. That's the uh, the cult elastic. Use the armor and the X Factor throw bait. <laughs> Didn't have enough meter for the level three, but he is fishing so hard. It's all he wants. And Nemesis is going to take the game for him, though. Dovalicious, I wonder how they will adapt to the scheming of Xeno in trying to get this Nemesis level 3. Oh, looking like Ken's going to take some damage while Xeno builds plenty of meter, but the side lane catches Wesker. Do you think Wesker will survive? Uh, how close is he getting to 3 bars? Just barely short, so 2 combos required, but only 2. Looks like it, and now I think he'll only need one meter to get the kill because of that. Very fortunate for Dobbelicious. Oh, but now Zeno is getting caught by this Ken. Going to take some damage, ends up doing X-Factor level 3, and evaporates Spencer immediately. Nemesis coming in, has four meters. But no life bar potentially. Looks like this is going to be the. Oh no! Uh, this is not a combo that kills, I believe. And with that, Nemesis lives. He has one more chance to potentially level three. Will he find a way to make it happen, or will he die to side flash? It's so hard to do anything about that. Is even if you do get in, they're airborne, so you can't throw them. Player two wins. 
And with that, Dobblish is getting on the board, tying it up 1-1. One, one. Fast Tatsu, catching that standing medium. And it looks like this is going to build a decent amount of meter, but probably not kill. Oh, it doesn't only not kill. It looks like Togi manages to get out. Convenient drop and a quick and efficient pickup here. Okay. Ooh, DPing through the uh, grab there. Nice little toss up. Now, this is looking pretty rough for Toji. I know he wants that level 3, but he may need to consider having a team composition that actually supports his characters. But, uh, looks like instead Bionic Arm's gonna hit and has the opportunity to invest more meter, but doesn't get the full combo that they wanted. Gets caught by the Maelstrom. Another DHC available. Goes into install. Ready for the fall timing? Oh. That was kind of cool. I, I wonder if Dobby was thinking it was like regular Ryu and there was an upward version to, to be wielded. Just throwing some Hadokens and that one's enough to take it. And Bluest of Gamers, thank you for following. We're happy to have you in the Modern Marvel community here on the hub enters. Oh, Nemesis has that X-Factor active. It is draining, and Rockets do a decent amount of shit. No but Dobby, I, I feel like Dobby, these is, are Ooh, not the situation. Oh, is that still going to connect? It will. This is going to kill her off, I think. That means it's all up to evil Ryu. Let's see if he gets the chance. The level 3 connected. He's a mod now. You have witnessed it here first. Zeno is now a mod of the Avengers because he did it. Dobbleish is probably going to still win the game, but Zeno won in Kevin's heart, and that <laughs> Zeno Zeno won in spirit, even though Dobbleish is won in truth. And with that, Zeno has made it. Zeno, you don't need to play Nemesis anymore. You could just play like a real team now. <laughs> okay, we, we're seeing Stars Wesker, Dante, Virgil. Okay, this seems substantially better. Is Dobbleicious ready to fight the power? Also, shout outs to Dobbleicious because, like, you know, one of the great players of Palette Swap, and sometimes you need to be the person that Zeno gets mod against. It, happened, it had to happen to one of us, right? Jeez, Virgil, what a tear up there. The question is, after playing that much Nemesis, how frosty is that Virgil going to be? That's the good thing about Virgil, you don't need to be on point, you just need to be able to Helmbreak her. Or, you don't have to be on point, you just have to be on the team. Yeah, it, or, of course, like, they're very good Virgil players, but, like, the floor that you get for just having, like, basic confidence in playing Virgil is very, very high. Oh, and Psychilic has clipped it for posterity, so everybody knows that Zeno, in tournament, hit level 3 and acquired his mod ship. Ooh, Thank you, Psychilic. Oh, but Ken is really low on life here, and one bullet is enough to take it. I assume one bullet should have been enough to take it the entire time, but Ken, very tough man, gets shot a bunch and still survives. Psylocke also ready to get shot a decent amount and still survives. Oh, multiple oh. side blasts connecting for great damage. Oh, nice crouch. that was so unfortunate for Dobblish, it's just outside of the active range. Oh, I don't think that's gonna connect. That's not Phantom Dance. Oh, uses the X Factor. This is looking very solid for Zeno. Goes into immediate level three, but it drops. It drops, and he gets shot. No, he doesn't get shot. Everything is fine. Okay, this is scary for both players. Either one could die instantaneously. Dante is gonna lose a lot of red life here, and there's the mix. 
Very good block by Xeno, but didn't keep blocking. And with that, Dobblish just kills off Dante. It's all up to Virgil, but Virgil has no X Factor. Oh, this is. He's caught. Oh, the roll. Oh, that an awkward could... hit. And with that, I think this is going to be the end of Evil Ryu. Oh, it's not. Instead, it's potentially the end of Virgil. Looks like the down TAC is coming out. Will there be the opportunity to get enough to kill? Goes for another TAC, even though they have four meters. Hey, he's Zeno about to get a bar. One team Hyper might actually be able to kill here. Oh, oh Ninjutsu oh, no, activated. No, nin Ninjutsu there. <laughs> Into Dry Tag. Ninjutsu Dry Tag is not something I have seen. Uh, I assume Ninjutsu goes away when you tag. But I don't actually know that for real. Ninjutsu doesn't oh, go away when you attack? Okay. Okay, okay. That. Dobbleish is discovering new tech here in match, getting ninjutsu assists out. Okay. I, I kind of feel like ninjutsu side thrust assist would be pretty game defining, but that's 3 meters and your assist slot. <laughs> Monster Hunter point. Oh, nice, nice. Gambit. And Strider. Ooh, I'm excited to see how this ends up balancing out because Monster Hunter, Giant Sword, good arrows, able to approach decently against Stars Wester. But we're going to have to see. Uh, Looks like uh, fighting from range and Zeno, the first one to win Footsie, is going to be able to bring her to the corner. Goes for the up TAC. Oh no, Zeno. Oh no, he, he wasn't technically proficient enough to become a villain, so he gets to still be a hero. Congratulations, Zeno. Heavy HP character, but this is more than enough if you did the HP. <laughs> Actually, she, she's only 1 million. Maloney said that she's a 1 million character, so... Wizard Tim, do you count 1 millions as high HP? I feel like they kind of are, just because so many of the, the relevant cast has historically been like the 900k characters. Yeah, but it's a damage it... threshold based uh, summation. Nice throw. <laughs> the tiny character bodies ruining Wesker again. I, I think that just doing the, the basic grab, you, you don't get the combo off of it. it it's you needed to go for. Or I forget if that was the medium command throw or was what the setup was for it, but didn't quite have it set up. Yeah, also, I love the there. Genesis Gamma with that is healthy. Uh, I, I like the alternative of that is healthy to that is safe. Good stuff, <laughs> Genesis Gamma. Oh, but now it's all up to Virgil, but how do you feel about X Factor 3 Virgil with 2 meters? I feel like this game is not even close to ending. <gasps> <laughs> oh no, it's close to ending, just the question is for who? <laughs> this is the end of Gambit, and it may soon be either the end of Virgil or the end of Strider 2099. Let's see who manages to survive this set. The crown, oh man. Oh, but most of them... Yikes. And with that, Xeno takes it 3-2 over Doppelicious. I'm gonna have to hop off to play my match against the Joker. Good luck and have fun, Joker. Oh, and thank you, Milky, for rating for Party of Eight. You're just in time for a match coming up. We're going to have the amazing Isisera versus the incredible Joker. But uh, I kind of feel like people are, are sleeping on him just because one of the characters is a buy on it. Oh no, Stars Deal! Uh, I, I, I am very surprised that uh, he's deciding to go with this order and setup. But let's see how it ends up working for Noel. Oh, the happiest of birthdays. Orange Hulk, what's he going to do with this? Goes for the triple hyper after the fling dash. Morgan gets out. I think you could have routed to the wall bounce uh, <laughs> there, and maybe that would have worked. He actually does have some unique happy birthday routes when you're Orange Hulk. Yes. Uh, Orange Hulk, pretty good at happy birthday combos. Uh, lots of things that stabilize with bounces and other things to just like get where you want to be. But Dark Phoenix is imminent. How do you feel about trying to make it through the entire team against Dark Phoenix? 
may not need it's to be the doable, entire team. But Tuda, I mean, he knows the matchup against uh, Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, what tech may be available on this team to deal with her? Ooh, got the uh, hit. Team Rocket Punch. Oh, tags in the Phoenix now, making sure that there's the opportunity to go for the kill with her. Is Orange Hulk going to stay in? Does until his Valiant end. Now it's up to Nova Sentinel. Just throw her. Hey, bro. Okay, what's the way that Tutamax is going to make this end? Goes for the down TAC and backs up into Rocket Punch. Hyper Sentinel Force is going to come out and has the mix available. Wow, that was the earliest tag I've seen out of the Dark Phoenix transformation ever. Got to pop and then just immediately bring Morrigan in. Incoming mix. Hey, where are we going to see the X-Factor? Oh, nicely timed. No, that was exactly when he needs it. And with that, kills off the two characters. Noel, Phoenix did the job. Morgan did the job. And Stars Jill lived long enough to do her job of getting leader for Phoenix. So great stuff to Noel. Oh, has the basic combo. Oh, this is looking very scary. I think that this kills at a rate that builds the five meters, though. So that means it is going to be up to Dudamax to make sure oh, that no. there yeah, has to uh, So Dark Phoenix is happening. It, he can't kill fast enough to make this not happen. Oh, and may not have Hulk for when it does happen. This is looking scary for Tutamax. He invested those resources, but doing so against the Phoenix player is much scarier. Oh, gets caught, and now with the X, with the incoming mix up, gonna catch Nova. That was cheap. I got it. <laughs> okay, is the hard drive gonna happen on incoming? Mm. X, uh... Confident in their defense, but not confident enough. And with that, Noel takes a second game very swiftly with the power of their Phoenix. Uh, Star Shield did work that game, though. She got a hit and confirmed it into some damage. And this time, Tutamax bring out the Nova on point instead of the Orange Hulk. I feel like Orange Hulk has been doing okay against uh, Star Shield. Oh no! Noel got a. A uh, quarter circle back super by accident, but it's still in an okay position. And this time, yeah. uh, Tutamax ready for the snap isn't just going to put himself in scary situations of fighting Dark Phoenix, but instead is fighting the scary situation of regular Phoenix who got the kill on Nova. Oh. Catching both of them here. Morgan is bleeding, nice but it starts still getting that throw. It's great. Oh, I think that could have done the wall bounce there, but looks like Tutamax. This is the first time Tutamax has had an X Factor going into this phase of the game but may not have Hulk for it. This is looking like something... Uh, oh, Noel designed to just back off, get Hulk on the screen. Catching on fire with these Morrigan normals, but able to block in time for those. This is the end of Orange Hulk, but Dark Sentinel. Uh, we've seen uh, some Sentinels doing work tonight. Do you think that Tune Max is going to be one of them? Keep it in the base bracket. It's just... Noel's experience against Sentinel is probably up there with some of the best you can get. Mm -hmm. Fought Ray Ray, he's fought. If you pick a Sentinel from an era, he's played them. And uh, his Morgan goes down to the Sentinel, though. The things are looking very favorable for Noel. He has all the meter that he could need, uh, and Tutamax does not have that much meter. It does hit with a hard drive, however. Uh, hard drive does not suck for one. Let's see. What's the chance here? Oh, got it! And with that, Tutamax's Dark Sentinel survived. Now bringing it to 1 2 against Noel. Okay, so it looks like that scene was a better plan. It didn't quite work out. Oh my gosh, Edith just lost half of her life. 
but going for a combo and how snaps are in. He's really good at reading that mix, but this time getting hit on the back end. Now, uh, Morgan's free to spend meter. Oh, she would be free to spend meter, but I don't know if she's alive. I would X this. Survive? Mm, I, I like the plan of Xing this too. Uh, but not TAC. They could break TAC. Noelle is ready for TAC. But uh, it starts Jill here. I think that the meter. Oh no, two blocks. Continuing to go for TACs. But uh, Morgan gets in, and now this is looking very... Goes for the X Factor at the last one so they could get their shell kick. This is looking very possible for either player. Uh, but true to Max, happy to get out of the uh, range of where Morgan can mess with him, and then hit with the human rocket. This is looking really good for two to max. Trying to bring this back. Still TAC with her Tim. Why are there so many TAC? Um, is it in Vogue? I'm not sure. Well, apparently so, but this is what else is in Vogue is killing stars still. Two to max ties it up two to two. And uh, if they take one more, they will be sending Noel down to the learner side of the bracket. But I think uh, Noel wants to do that Dormammu do and just feel a little bit more confident in what they can do. Hmm, what's the last character gonna be? Hinata? Oh, it's the Hinata's coming out! a really good assist out. for Dormammu, ironically. <laughs> oh my god, Dan? I wonder what the <laughs> metric that Noel is going for in trying to figure this all out. Where it's like, okay, does the I don't know if these characters have good assists. Do any of them seem like they would have something that would be solid for DHC? What's the thing? Oh, I would X here, kill Dormammu, but uh, Tutamax instead is going to go for uh, reset. Uh, instead, hit some stars, Jill, and the happy birthday happens, but happy birthday with her is not easy, but fortunately, got the hit on Nova instead of on Sentinel there. Orange Hulk comes in. The timing there. He's a little bit faster, I think, than he anticipated. Oh, this is looking so possible for either of them. Got the pickup with missiles, but both of them going for TACs very liberally. And I think this is going to be the end of Star's Jill. Has access to this. Oh, we'll need to use two meters this way, but if you need to use two meters to kill a character, what do you do, Wizard Tim? You just do it. Specifically on this team, you build a lot of bar. Ooh, the Chaotic Flame gonna cook some Nova. Ends up investing the X-Factor in Silver. Okay, Orange Hulk coming in. Will he survive the mix-up? He lives and X Factor starting to run down. Uh, let's see. Goes for the Gamma Crush to see if they could maintain this. Doesn't X Factor. Uh, Noel is just respecting that X Factor might come. Oh, it's all gonna be up to Dark Sentinel, but he has no meter and there's three meters on deck for Noel. So if he just gets a confirm, level three is available and Sentinel is not a high life character. I do believe the amazing Yipe is a word for this matchup bad. Oh, okay. And gets the tag into Doom. This should kill. And with that, Noel takes it in a 3 2 over Tutamax. Tutamax almost bringing it back, but good stuff to both players. I'm gonna need to hop off now to play my match against Zeno. Good luck and have fun, Zeno. This is a match between a very fast character and a more balanced to slow end character. The coach will live completely on staying in this fast pressure zone with Thanos' ability to react is just too slow. And with another quick throw, he's going to oh goes for the fatal pop pickup option using legacy trailer to get the exchange. Goes to the mix, sets up the mid. And not able to get a full kill here, but setting up the pressure once again with another Legacy Trigger activation. Mixing perfectly between the two movesets of Wolverine and X-23. But 
Carlos not one to be left in the dark now that he has access to a much faster style of gameplay offered by this character and utilizing these zero tools to just lock down Laura's mostly ground-based movement. Be prepared if a Talon comes out. And presenting quite a challenge for Sakela to find a way in, but almost hitting the hit after the charge claw there. Carlos repelling, taking us all the way to the corner to finish off this character. Though. Still has a little Sagamu for the next mix. Where will he be hitting? He just goes for the meaty. Psychelic Dante utilizing Stinger and Devil Kicker finds the gap he needs to set up some chips and not be caught in this pressure. He's a quick bold teleport. Carlos holding on to their X, saving it for any time he can activate a photon, but gets the top of the Hawkeye assist, and without any bar, he's potentially going to be killed before X Factor can be even a factor. It's the finishing, just enough. No DHC required, so you look up one. Psychilic like empowered by the modding of their, their new ally, Zeno, ready to be here in bracket this damage. Do you think the mods get a power up with your tin? I don't know. I'm not one. <laughs> Mod and spirit. You you moderate the tech side of things by helping with all of the the bots in the channel and stuff like that. So thank you, thank you. But we have Laura coming in at only half life now. But it seems like trying to get around this uh, Titan shield is something that uh, Psychilic's still figuring out how to interact with. Wow. Nice little sneak in there. Laura is very short and very fast, which helps in getting around some of those more vertical things. Oh no, didn't quite have the timing. I think she's the third fastest move speed in the game. I, I believe you are right. It's like Spencer, Iron Fist, and her or something like that, or maybe Sentinel's in there. Because Sentinel is arbitrarily very fast for a gigantic robot. Oh, Prop Shredder, once again. That move has a tendency to break scaling and or cause people to fall out. Yeah, Prop Shredder is like a last resort thing. You use it if you don't have anything else that will work in a useful way, because there's almost always a better thing to do than Prop Shredder. <laughs> oh, the Alpha Why Counter the Alpha in. Counter? No, I, I understand that with the... Cause with base game X-23, you're more likely to have the Alpha Counter that's an invincible crossover assist. So uh, maybe Psychelic was just like, oh, it's X-23, but on Berserker Barrage, it doesn't work that way, my friend. Exchange, you get a potentially better rush cam combo assist. Yeah, the assist is just infinitely better. The, the assist is also good for zoners because it pushes them back mostly to screen on, on hit or block. It, it's very, very good. Hey, Hawkeye, um, I do like this show a lot. You don't see it much anymore. And I feel like it's solid against both of King Carlos' characters, so like keeping it in this order, if they happen to be able to kill off Thanos, they're in a very good situation to fight Doom with tons of meter on deck, jam session available, and uh, this is looking very good for Psychelic. Arguably one of the worst matchups in the game is jam session Hawkeye versus Doom. Just, just speed shot out so much of his life. Oh, that could have been everything right there, but I feel like wisely investing in the X-Factor, and King Carlos also wisely investing in the X-Factor. Is the teleport on deck? It is, but it leaves Doom with a pixel. Psychelix, please do not summon any assists. Just like Vortex and Fly. Oh no, you neither Vortex nor Flu. King Carlos can do this. All he needs is one of these last minute incoming mix-ups. And that was it. As long as he finishes this combo, it's gonna be the end of Hawkeye. And from such a distinct advantage, Achilles is has victory stolen from them by King Carlos being clutch in the final moments. But Achilles instantly ready to get back in, doesn't feel uh, dissuaded by that situation, ready to do some killing with some Wolverine more. And just but, uh, creep in, exactly what you want to do when dealing with a Buster character. Oh, 
this is a very scary matchup to just like not get zoned into Oblivion. Zero has Missile, he has Buster. He even has Thanos for covering some of the different situations. And if he kills, hits you, he's gonna kill because... Oh, or maybe not. Zero giving modded characters the, the first one free, you get to survive until you don't. They go can Fatal Claw into a DHC, perhaps they can snipe with, uh, oh, that oh, works too. Weapon X Prime was not quite there, and Donnie's gonna get caught here. And because Devil Trigger's activated, Psychelic is building no meter for any of this. This is very challenging for Psychelic, but it does get all of King Carlos's X Factor to make this kill happen, I think. So, at least Psychelic will have Dark Hawkeye if Sora gets mixed on incoming. Wait. I thought she was in here with him, but he's in here with her, Wizard Jim. Okay, goes for the reset. Nice tag. Doesn't want to deal with whatever Psychelic was cooking there. Ooh, jumped in between the missiles there. But Wolverine Lore, very scary situation. And Hawkeye uh, needs to be pretty cautious with those summons. But Dark Hawkeye against this full team, do you think he'll be able to just take them on with that, uh, that X-Factor? Because that's a lot of help. It depends on whether or not Carlos calls any assists. Hawkeye can blow things up real easily. Gimlet. Keeping a lockdown hard, it looks like. Oh, got the hit. Will Psychilic invest in X-Factor here? Maybe use the level 3 instead? And uses the level 3 and holds on to X-Factor. I like it. But Thanos may live through this. You think he's dead? That was a long cutscene, too. Um, just barely. Okay, getting the X immediately for zero. But gets caught by Buster. Immediately throws after oh, the drop. You have to position it because only the very middle section of OTDs for some reason are bad. Going to get the Kiss of Fire to try and save themselves. And it kills Zero. This is actually totally in Psychic's favor now after having looked so bad for so much of the match. Yeah, just pull back and Gimlet if he dives again. Oh, he does oh no, he, there's no meter for Gimlet. <laughs> Oh, but if a Plasma Beam or two connects, that is not going to let Psychilic make it through on this. Their health are pretty even now. Oh, got the jump in, but no confirm. Don't slide in. Okay, you've got the life lead, just pull back. And with that, Psychilic stalls for just long enough to take it 2-1. And that's the good stuff when you lost a tight uh, time loss previously, but you're still willing to play for the timeout when it's what's right. Psychilic is that solid player with a solid match. I also just feel like I cursed that one when I said the only way he was going to come back was if he called his assist poorly. Sometimes it's how it goes. The assist comes out and gets vaporized. But, and a lot of the time it's a calculated risk where you think you're going to get the opportunity to turn it into something valuable, and sometimes it is worth it, but a lot of the time it's just such a risk when the time is also running low. Psychilic has got the corner and the hit, but then the missile save. Why is Tyrone such a good friend with you, Kim? So the charging claw, doing everything Psychilic needs, Fatal Claw here? Zero goes down, and Psychilic has the meter advantage along with Zero going down. Oh no, but the happiest of birthdays is going to do tons of damage. Oh, uh, Quarter Circle Forward Light did not combo into the beam there, so Psychilic was saved. And now with characters, he has much more experience. Laura has many supers, Zoroyo. She has Fatal Claw, she has Weapon X Prime. Uh, she has, uh, Legacy Trigger, she has Berserker Charge, uh, she has, what's the name of her basic quarter circle forward one? Do you know, uh, Wizard Tim? I usually do. I, I, something, something Fury. Oh, but the X-Factor activated, and now this is looking like the end of Thanos. Okay, Doctor Doom against Hawkeye, but King Carlos has not used his X Factor yet, and managing uh, the amount of chip you eat during uh, the Hawkeye X Factor is very important for how you interact. Oh, got the hit, but didn't have the confirm with us. And now oh, X Factor, rage trigger. <laughs> rage trigger. There we go. 
Oh, but that advancing guard's so good by Psychelix. Will they touch the ground? Not safely. They only touch the ground after he gets the throw. And there's enough meter on deck to just level 3 here. Carlos doesn't make it too complicated. Ruling in the kingly way, puts that hand down and executes the Hawkeye, tying it up 2-2. Two two. This is true. We've seen really almost every outcome between these two. They're doing a very good job of adjusting to all their little bits. Mm -hmm. Oh, but the adjustment here may be killing Laura before she gets to play. Getting the hit goes for the snap instead, bringing in that Hawkeye because there's been too much scary near comeback or comeback. One more chance though. He's got a DHC. Oh, not a bad exchange for the Delta Scanner, but the secondary is getting hit not so much. Oh, and kills with the snap, so Hawkeye still gets forced to come in. Exactly what Carlos was going for, but. That means that Psychelic is left with the character they have on their base game main team, Dante, and X Factor 3. Let's see if Dark Dante is able to make it Ooh, gets caught by the falling pizza cutter. Good stuff to Carlos poking with it, but left Dante alive, which is a lot scarier. X Factor's gonna run down pretty quickly though, and especially if Carlos is able to just control the screen during that entire time. Oh, Psychelic is going to need to play the game of his life here in order to take out this full zero, this full Thanos. But that's a start. Didn't quite have the confirm. Yeah, actually, Dante's tools do a pretty good job of checking Thanos' options. Yeah, Thanos can't really, like, do obnoxious air approaches against Dante. But Dante also needs to some level of respect counter and sometimes bait it out with an airplay because he's blocking time to punish. Oh, the aggression with the air dash light. Goes into level three, but oh, no, it double went. must die. And with that, King Carlos is ready to take it and secures the game going up 3-2 over Psychelix to move on in, I believe that's winner's side? In order to face the winner of two to max and Noel be hungry, that's going to be exciting. And thank you to everybody who's tuned in this evening. We hope there can be only one winner. Get ready to brawl. Fight! And Sarah utilizing this strong ability to take to the skies to avoid as much as possible from dealing with red kills. Very strong grounded character who can confirm off the air, but so long as you are not in that grounded range, a lot of the hits will be a bit weaker. You're almost getting a hit on Modok, just falling a little short on the slide, and now here comes the rest of the brothers. Ooh, there it just conquering all of this Dante pressure for the access to these strong assist options, but that snap on Virgil not going their way. I said, you know, already blowing the prop shredder early in the combo is really gonna scale this, so I do not think for quite a level three they'll kill Modok. Is up another quick helm breaker straight to the noggin. There's a lot of noggin to hit. Zeno is going for all of it. Finally, dispatching Modok. Zeno you know, going for an acid rain mix here. And the smaller character body of Shadow Lady being just enough of an issue. Sure, it gets a freebie out of that mix and turning around the offense. Ready to kill the problem character, level 3. And one more mix. Look for the Captain Marvel. To fight this character with a strong air moon ability. You know, getting the launcher there, but not getting the combo. Sarah just wearing through the X Factor. At this time, in Zeno's turn, finding this hit, going for a double top. Just finishing as X Factor wears out. It's going to be a fair fight between Dante and Shadow Lady. You know, not doing very much damage here. You put it all on the Devil Must Die. And this will probably be enough. 
Oh no. Can you get the pickup? Oh. A little too far, and Isis Era immediately turning that around. Choosing to be grounded and utilize the bevy of projectile minefield that Modok can create. Red Shield almost to half health. Naya combo has been made, but only attacking to the ground. Sir, it's taking a bit of a risk there. And, you know, once again, just looking for the slide or other options to start the strong Red Shield offense. Now, very close to the edge of death, just from Chip here. Just as before, Dante really was the main attraction in that last match, and we're going to see if Icera can bring this around, or will it be another set? Almost entirely dominated by Zeno's execution here. Icera, more willing to go in of this mode off, finding a fast aerial downward. And now, putting this final pressure aware of the problem that Virgil can commit with swords up. They're now choosing the safest route or you know to potentially spend their meter without any payment. You know, they're taking to the air and immediately back to the ground when they think they see a vulnerability. Both players now spending their extra but they're going to run out first. You know, and finding this hit, momentum ready to be Virgil. No X Factor, but he's got the bar. Shadow Lake committing to the option. Ooh, Slash is going to be punished as I think Dara was so close to the ground. Looks like another fast level 4 pickup. Oh, not even needing the follow up. Just as before, Isis Era shedding up traps, putting on the layers, and Raid Tree Hulk just not catching a break to be needed. It does ask the obvious question for Philly if Zeno should swap out this character and let one of the Dante brothers work. But this time, Zeno committing with this X Factor and finding some hypers. No, Modok on the brink of death himself. Oh, finally clearing out the first demon on this team. And now, you know, showing off his execution change and his strategy. Red Shield now the center of attention. They plow through the team health. Of course, you guys deserve to immediately utilize Bar and DHC here. Captain Marvel being the only healthy character still active. Taking no risk and just looking to get as much health back as possible. You know, shuffling into range with some blitz action. Is there a hyper or a fast normal? Getting the full extension. This may be a temple two bar kill. Now, I there did get the health back, so X Factor Shadow Lady is ready to go. But the life difference is actually going to be a major issue. Okay, doll mode? Install. Adding both the Kami and the Chun Li moveset at her disposal. As there is now just fine. Hanging this around. Fast dashes. The extension takes to the ground. And, oh, it's a weird interaction off the dive kick. So they couldn't hyper, but still working out in their favor. Now just has to deal with this character before he can put up swords. Nice Sarah finding the pressure she needs in to the attention. Oh, crucial drop. Going to give it's probably enough. Nice Sarah. Drink of full victory there. Giving Xeno the chance to pull up one now. Now, 
now. Right back at it. In situation. Always present. Red Tree Hulk just under this pressure. And they make it through the entire... And, and will Dino find the extension? Probably going to need... Yeah. Just might get that third bar he needs. But Virgil Assist ruining it? And accidentally... Oh, both players accidentally getting their transfer libraries. Double bar? Oh. Oh my. Missile's not connecting the way they want it. The whole player is spending a lot of bar. And they call it an intermission, but you know, finding his way back to where he needs to be. Strong change of life. Shadow Lady living only on the smallest pixel. Is there going to keep this character in? See how much damage they can get and far too. Oh. Eventually losing two characters for this gambit. Now Modok. Still a great defensive tool, but so low life. The risk is easily being chipped out by the Dante Killer Illumination using the invulnerability. Sarah is going to make the most of every single one of these bleeding characters. I can have the extension though. Now all up for Captain Marvel. Both players still have X-Factor, both players have roughly the same bar here. A quick X-Factor pickup, and ooh, Elmbreaker really not working out the way Zeno wanted in that corner situation. I can tear out one more camp here. Now X-Factor Virgil versus X-Factor Captain Marvel. Next, it will be the deciding factor. <laughs> Nice Sarah, taking the risk, making those great choices, coming up ahead of Zeno, knocking him down a bracket. The gauntlet. There can be only one winner. Go for broke. Fight! <laughs> Actually getting caught by the rainbow missile. Well, with this particular assist, has a lot of defensive options on the double missile shell. And personally, I think if I were Carlos, bring in this zero sooner than later. Noel is just going to build so many little incremental momentum shifts here. Double missiles, meteors, and a lot of bar. Catching a little on the toe, Zero looking pretty fine. Great use of Grounded Normals, catching the dash. Now Thanos is brought back in, still unable to defend with this missiles and purification. Finding themselves a nice little snipe, Noel immediately trying to return this favor. Thanos now has to avoid every single missile. Chip is such an easy factor now. Stalking Flare, Doom still hasn't been tooled, nor Thanos to catch this well styled Mamu. Everything just working out so well for the pressure and these offensive tools. Go. Bringing back in Thanos, Carlos still has a bit of life left to gain on Doom, which reduces the second factor on the red. So taking his chances, trying to build just a little bit more bar while blocking, or he brings in the X-Factor Doom. But now out of resources, the X-Factor picking down. Noel just has to keep his brain filled. Player two wins. This is my go for broke. Fight! Yeah, and this time, relying on the immediate point zero is a great choice to potentially phase the Snow Owl problem. Now, on Carlos to start the momentum he desires and turn around what was seemingly a very one-sided first match. Noel in here with the Dormammu hands has access to the Shadow Lady missiles. 
realizes that with double missiles, there's double opportunity. How, how do you feel about this double missiles team? It looks like it's been working out. It's everything Dormammu ever wanted, if you ask me. Definitely pretty nice. But this is scary. King Carlos gonna have to try and do this. Uh, getting around the meteors, but now opportunity for uh, Noel to get to the ground. Uh, missiles connect, but that saves uh, Dormammu. Zero here with two meters on deck, but Noel at any point could come down chaotic flame, try to get the last bit of the zero. All those fails, check everything of a stalking player and just go from there. Ooh, and it looks like this Ogenmu activation gets the X Factor out of Noel. Wants to make sure he does not get his Dormammu blown up and Volcano will pack here. Do you think that a solo Doctor Doom against this whole team of so many missiles will be able to do it? Carlos's Doom has been putting in all the work, so I'm confident it can happen, but you just have to be patient, I think, with Noel's team at the moment. Missiles plus missiles is very funny, by the way. <laughs> if you had War Machine, it's Oops All Missiles. Oops All Missiles sounds like a great team. I would be excited for that. Uh, and once Avengers get some more time on their plate, I'm sure we will see that opportunity. Yeah, this, this team looks like uh, against melee characters, they would have a very unpleasant time. Oh, but King Carlos didn't quite catch Noel, but was able to uh, get a hit afterwards, did not believe properly. Both of them have their missiles coming out. But Noel seemed to be able to keep access to more of his resources, still has almost two meters and has caught Thanos here. Uh, Thanos looks like he struggles against his team composition, but uh, it could just be one good counter in order to turn everything around. Oh, the beam, no meter on deck to do more with it. Oh gosh, Zero taking 327k from full screen, that's rough. Ooh, but needs to spend his Sogenmu time blocking. That is not how you want to spend Sogenmu. And use the X-Factor to save Zero. Wants to get that confirmed. Save Zero entirely by getting him off a point. But this is looking very challenging, Carlos. Yeah, Noel just has so many more liberations to build back any bar he spends. So stocking player is free real estate and slowing down the game plan. Mm -hmm. Look at the bar he's built. <laughs> yeah, I, I like those counters, but I feel just like uh, being a little bit more ready to turn it into... That didn't quite work out. Unfortunate for King Carlos. And now his Doctor Doom's going to need to do the solo if they want to live. And with that, we see the crush goes for the Doom tag. And this is going to be the end of Doctor Doom. The Spear Flames enough, and Noel takes it 3-0 over King Carlos in order to secure the set and move on to winner's final. I'm very impressed that Noel's been trying out all these characters. It feels like free advertising. Uh, what's gonna go on in this match, and, and I'm just excited. And we have Psychilic here against Arroyo, one of Arizona's finest with the X-23. I actually met Psychilic, this is Wolverine Lara, sorry, but I met him when he was an X-23 player at CEO 2015. We just sat in a room without talking to each other for eight hours and became best friends just off raw gameplay. But uh, speaking of raw, that Team Super was very terrifying right there, Isisera. It was terrifying indeed. Asura has access to that invulnerability, and it also left Monster Hunter in install state, so even if Asura dies, when she comes in, she's gonna have that super fast roll that can get through, cross people up, has so little recovery, unless you're maintaining her pressure. 
and yeah, it's such an oppressive character. Uh, both X23, Wolverine, and also uh, Wolverine Lara are just very heavy rushdown characters. And I know that Psychelix likes to play that rushdown style. He never keeps away under any circumstance, even with keep away characters. So it's very nice to see this movement. And Monster Hunter, they're trying to land safely, but things are just not looking out. Uh, we see the reset Okaiba right there, just tries to get the vibe check, clips the feet. And it might be enough, but goes for a snapback. Maybe Anchor Gambit has been doing work uh, throughout the day, Isis Sarah. A reset. Yes, Zoroyo is definitely a player known for their Anchor Gambit. Uh, one of the things where if you survive, the chances that he hits you with a Cajun Strike or very well placed normal are just quite high. And there was a Cajun Strike, managed to get out of the corner, and now it's like he need to deal with this. Managed to just avoid it. But let's see if Zoroyo is going to get anything going with this character. So he looks happy to stay on the opposite side of the screen. And, and yeah, you can tell dollars. both of these people have watched X-Men 97, definitely the homage to the X-Men. And Saroyo impressing me a lot. Moving this well with the connection all the way from Brazil must be really tough. And bringing it back. This could be a dead Dante with the proper optimization, but the online classic. Psychilic tags in Hawkeye, goes for the team super. The dual cabin, if you will, and things are looking 1-0 for Psychilic, but Saroyo definitely keeping it competitive. Uh, Tim, what do you think the adaptation should be right here? A big thing about Zoroyo is he conditions a little too much for overhead of a lot of his Astura chains. I want to see if he can sneak in a bit more low as Psychilic is already looking for it and reading pretty well on these changes. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel that um, there were a lot of overhead options in the past game, and Psychilic just was choosing offense and if life has taught me anything is that when confronted by something you don't know you you play it safe today i i went out with a really cute girl and she asked me to tattoo my neck so i just kindly had to say no and this is Psychilis game plan right here let's see what happens oh my goodness nice punish and just waiting out the neutral game Isis era Tim, I think that Saroyo needs to be a little bit more patient. He's he's committing too hard at the moment. Mm -hmm. And Asura does have a fairly decent air fireball that can be used to check x three coming after him. But he just doesn't like to use it much. And in addition to that, when you're on 200 MS or 180 MS or so, uh, sometimes the hard committing to things is the thing that you're, you're able to do. So Zoroyo's gotten really good at the elements of play that are able to still function even playing at high MS, but it looks like he's going to lose his Monster Hunter right here. Uh, Wizard Tim, would you go for the snap? We have seen Zoroyo do work with that Gambit before. Um, I think in this case, I feel like can Acid Rain and Gambit can't... Oh, we didn't even choose that. Can't get out of that, but Hawkeye, on the other hand, it'll be interesting. Ooh, got the throw when Cajun Escape was used, and the second one, this time the Confirms on deck going to be able to potentially kill Gambit. And Psychilic going for some risky plays right here. Uh, those drops might cost him, uh, but also might be looking for the team to protect or just looking to react to that uh, wall cling right there from Gambit. It's not really uh, paying off and the Cajun escape has been punished three times in the same game. Psychilic just shutting down any approach that Saroy is trying to do right here. and. I wonder if there's any adaptation you do, if you switch characters, or if you just go in harder and and pray that the blender starts. Uh, it, it's really rough, but Saroyo here with the proper optimization could bring Psychilic down. Uh, it's looking like he's winning neutral this this game, and it hasn't really happened throughout the last ones. Definitely, Asura has managed to do so much more damage to Laura here, though. I, I don't know. When you're play, praying to the Blender Gods, who are you praying to? Uh, both? Is there something that, like, if you give them the burnt offering, are you going to be able to hit your next left right? No, I think the way it works is the more your mind is blank, the better it is. Because if you don't know, they don't know. So you have to show, like, just no thoughts, head empty, and, and that's when Mix actually gets scary because it's truly random. Um, there was a, a marble tournament the last weekend here in Guadalajara, and I was fighting my friend Aquanub in the grand finals. He's commentated here on Avengers before, and he was like kind of reading my inputs in a way where he knew what mix-up I was gonna do just based on that we've played forever. So I just decided, you know what? I'm just gonna flip a coin in my head and 
that's it. Whatever happens, happens. And I was being way more successful in the second set of the Grand Finals than in the first one because of that. Nice and adaptation, I've... Wolf. Sometimes you just have to shut your brain off. Less is more, they say in, in a lot of things. This game doesn't really have either Zangief or throw loops. You don't always have to be thinking four steps ahead about what sequence works best. <laughs> you can just let your characters play it out. Absolutely, and here it's a, an arrow war right here. Looking a lot like uh, the Rings of Power Season 2. Let's see what happens. This archery battle going well. It, it's funny that uh, Monster Hunter, she doesn't really use her grounded horizontal arrow very often, but that aerial arrow is a major tool for Zoroya and gaining some damage. Yeah, but even then, Psychilic coming out uh, on top of that situation, going for just a very passive game plan and forcing Saroyo to commit to some things, and I feel like that's the game plan that's been paying off for Psychilic. Uh, we see the safe DHC right there, but Psychilic gets blessed. Very, very interesting. And now just tries to keep cheaping uh, Asura. It's, it's just been a very calm but effective game plan, and Saroyo hasn't really found an answer to Psychilic's defensive uh, game flow. It looks perhaps not always playing as many recent events, so he's just relying on his long-earned Marvel instincts, and this is where I think Zoro is having so many issues. It's like, like is just sitting and saying, no you. Yeah, if you can know you someone, it means that you can understand how they think, and by that point, it becomes really complicated to beat a player if they have such a good read on you. Three seconds on the clock is looking like it's over, and Sykilic not going for the timeout, just going for the regular win and advancing in our bracket. That was some very impressive stuff from Arizona's finest Palette Swap player. But Sykilic's only reward for managing to take on the battle against the Royal is that they're going to... One in the chat, or send me a direct message throughout social media. If you guys don't want to do that and you want to watch Good Marvel, press 2. And you can press 3 for both options. And here, Joker with the point Sentinel with Sentinel Assist. This is definitely some nightmare fuel, but I respect it because MBC2 Sentinel, for me, is the tightest uh, clone engine character. He is an amazingly cool character, but it looks like this time Gene's getting some hits on him. But Gene, one of the characters that needs to work a little bit harder for damage, uh, but able to block here in time. Meter advantage for Renard, but going to lose his gene all down to the Guile and Star's Jill. Do you think that he'll be able to get out of this incoming? Oh, mashes the button! Sometimes you just need this fling, but you can't do that into drones. And Flash Kick is one of those tools that Sentinel actually needs to respect. And so, same with Incendiary Grenade. Looks like he's going to go down to that, but Magneto's coming in. And I think this is really important. Sentinels are very effective against mutants, but Guile is just a regular ass dude with a lot of hair gel. So I don't think he'll struggle as much, but Magneto has no trouble reaping uh, uh, Guile to shreds right here. And the cross up has been there twice for Joker, establishing that he does like the 50 50 option. And now just looking like the whole Pythagoras theorem all around, all around the Stars Jill. Looking very, very bad right here for Renard in the first game, but I do believe there can be an adaptation, and, and Gene did start with the hit. It's just that Sentinel MBC2 version has so much health that it's very oppressive. One mistake, and you can be gone. It's true, and his pokes are so enormous, because just like Sentinel, he has these jumping mediums that hit half screen away, but he's actually fast, so he could make you deal with them instead of needing to just like hold it from two-thirds of the screen away. But Jean here looks like she's struggling, doesn't have enough meter to DH out, be out, but Guile gets in here. Sonic Boom, very solid against this team composition, same with Flash Kick. Guile is such a scary character in this game, and historically, mm -hmm. Guile has been a, a really good anti-meta character in every Marvel game he's been a part of. This is no different, and what a confirmation right here from Joker, looking just like a Catholic priest. Welcome back into the church, let's see what happens. Oh my goodness, and goes for the same side. You see the layers right here from Joker. Renard kind of expecting a cross-up, and will we see a same side one more time? No, the cross-up once again, but no confirmation. Stars Jill has to put in a lot of work. You have to spend that X in order to get rid of Joker's strongest and scariest character right here in MBC2 Sentinel. Ends up spending meter instead of the X in order to kill him off. It has just two left, but now X-Factor to deal with the two remaining characters. 
Ooh, got the gun into the confirm. Bernard, patient with it. Going to be able to potentially kill, but then drops the combo after the good part of the confirm. Oh my goodness. And now Joker just, you know, playing it very passively. Tags in Sentinel with the drones. Just wants to ice out that X Factor. And regular Sentinel just looks so clunky after watching MBC2 Sentinel. But still a scary character nonetheless. However, you have to be very, very precise. And precision was something that Crouch Medium was lacking there a little bit too early. Giving Renard an opportunity to bring it back. And oh my goodness. Stars Jill does so much damage. He does. And now has an incoming mix-up available for Magneto. Gonna get some fire on the ground. Oh, and he just tolerates it. Getting caught by some guns, but the gravity squeeze on deck. Is there a confirm available? Plink, plink, plink. The plink doesn't get there in time, and now they actually need to fight. Ooh. And once again, Joker comes out on top, but Renard keeping it very, very competitive. We'll have to see what happens here between both of our players. Uh, the adaptations were there, but I do believe going back to character select is the right option. I'd like to see maybe a point Gal. I don't think that's a bad idea at all. Gal was controlling Sentinel's movement really well, but he was just playing from behind the whole time. I think maybe you push the lead right here with the Guile and... Yeah, I, I feel that Joker's been running the right game plan, just very, very oppressive stuff. And the Shadow Lady assist, maybe the, the Corridor plus Guile is going to be enough to ice out uh, Joker's Sentinel pressure? I think that he was, oh, he had gone with missiles, but then changed the overdrive. He heard your words, Wolf, and was like, Wolf's really smart. That sounds like a great idea. Using Killer, it makes it so much harder to deal with Kyle. Uh, Sonic Boom controls the ground really well, and then if you're forced to take to the air, Pillar is just such a strong control tool. And if you get hit with just like a Pillar into Flash Kick, Kyle can confirm into damage, unlike many characters. That is just so scary that Gal can just do that. Yep. Uh, have I told you guys my paranormal Gal experience ever on stream? No. <laughs> so, this is a, a very good story. When I was around. 11 years old, I was of course interested in fighting games and I was like kind of solid. I wasn't great, but I, I was at least better than like people who had no idea, right? So we had a, a very shitty pizza place, kind of like Chuck E. Cheese here in Guadalajara, where my sister celebrated her eighth birthday party. And I was just stuck there with random kids just playing all the plushy arcade machines and like just whack stuff. And then I saw like a shining Street Fighter 2 cabinet in the back. So I approach the cabinet and nobody's playing with me because, of course, it's a real game full of like games for toddlers. And then the guy that cleans the place walks up to me. He's like, Do you even know what you're doing? And I'm like, Yeah, want to play? And he's like, Bet. He's like, First to 10? I'm like, Okay. And he beat my ass so bad that I was like, this is incredible. He Mr. Miyagi'd me out of fucking Peter Piper Pizza or whatever the place was called. It was bad. Uh, speaking of bad, though, uh, Renard is making the situation look drastically different here for Joker with the Gal Point and the Shadow Lady adaptation. Yeah, great adjustment by Renard. Trying to get that pizza tonight, get the resources in order to win this match. But now his assist is going to get blown up. There's no uh, X Factor available. Oh, potentially has the opportunity to kill Sentinel. Uh, if Guile comes in but is going to get hit, if Shadow Lady touches the ground, I would X just to get back to Jill Life because that is a lot of red there. Do you think that X Factor should be used on Shadow Lady, Jill, or what do you think? I, f I feel like you, you save your X Factor to maintain two characters because if you play from behind, you're vulnerable to a mix up, and Joker's looking precisely for that. Uh, and. You know, playing that conservative did punish Renard, and it ended up in a clean 3-0 sweep. Um, and, and yeah, it, it was convincing stuff, but I, I hate when sets go like this, you know? When it's like 3-0, but it was close, though. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it was a 3-0, but then each of the games was like, oh, the first game, Renard got time to hook. The second game was like, oh, this is close. And the, it's the place you go to when the tournament ran late, and it's 2 a.m., and nothing else is open. Uh, for all y'all, where's your favorite place to, for that PC to meet up afterwards and meet at 2 a.m.? Okay, so there was this tradition for, for the FGC. There still is. It's just that everybody in the Guadalajara FGC is like a grown man with families and stuff. So we don't hang out as much in, in, uh, until the generate hours. But 
the place we used to meet at is called Burritos El Rey, which is one of like the four 24-hour places in Guadalajara because it's not like a common thing to have a 24-hour place here. And we would meet at Burritos El Rey, which means Burritos the King in English, right? And I never quite understood why that place was named Burritos El Rey until there was a combination of like two FGC events and an alcoholic spree where I just needed food at 3 a.m. when I was like around college age. And we just showed up there and I asked for my burrito and the guy said, like a random buff guy that looks like Master Roshi that was just sitting at a table. I, I asked for my burrito de bistec al pa y pastor. And he goes, no. He comes no. here often. Give him two. And just signals at the employee. And he's like, Carlos, dale dos burritos. And I got a free burrito. And I understood that the buff old man was El Rey. He was the king. And that's why the, the place was named that way. It happened at 3 a.m., on a Wednesday night. That is excellent that you live near enough the king to eat his burritos and get two at a time. But Zeno right here has the two Devil May Cry brothers active, and that's maybe all he needs to take on Psychelix, but one of them's about to die. Do you think that there's going to be a snap? Or is there going to be a dark Virgil that tries to take this all through? I think that Psychelic just, just runs it through, tries to go for the mix-up. We do know that Deadpool is a, a fan of chimichangas, which is just a fried burrito. And he's trying to fry Zeno's brain right here, but, uh, you know, just playing it very passive. Goes for the gunshots and actually gets the hit, but the first hit manages to push Virgil away and just goes for the million dollars into X-Factor. Helms are being broken. I am very terrified at the moment, Tim, Isisera. This is getting spooky and psychilic. You can feel the heat in his hands. The hands are sweaty. Is mom spaghetti right here? And X Factor is about to run out, He's but there's out. also only 18 seconds left on the clock. And there's tons of meter for psychilic and none for Zeno. Gets the hit. Should be able to get the kill here potentially. Just needs to finish his combo. And with that, psychilic going to take the first game against Zeno in a nail biter of the game. That was definitely a, a close game right there. Uh, it could have gone either way. But yeah, that that's one of my favorite food hangout spots. Because, you know, there's so many FGC memories there. There was one time we were there at like 3 a.m. And randomly the wrestlers from the Arena Coliseo de Guadalajara, which is like Mexican pro wrestling, just mm -hmm. showed up full of like their very questionable lady company and then just start ordering burritos at 3 a.m. So it's like the one place where you get to see a very different groups in the city, like the FGC, wrestlers, just drunk people, uh, Christians, everywhere. It's, it's a melting pot. Um, oh, Virgil getting shot, though. It's oh good when God. you get to bring communities together. Uh, is there overlap in between the, the wrestling community and the FGC? I know that there's yeah. both the, the fire Kenny to Omega. succeed in both places. Kenny Omega, but uh, is the same true down, uh, down south? There is one. One overlap. Um, but I, I cannot reveal the player's identity because it's like a very <laughs> private thing because of, you know, pro, pro wrestling and mass and stuff. But I will say that there is one marble player in Guadalajara that's a pro wrestler, an active pro wrestler, and during the day, he sells action figures at a swap meet. And at night, he is a wrestler. Does he play Hagar is the real question. He plays Spider-Man, which is also kind of canonical if you watch the, the Tobey Maguire movies. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Mm -hmm. That's all the information I can give you guys. Because oh, you might totally figure it out. But it looks like Dante is going to need to make a comeback. He has resources, but doesn't have life. And with that, like, feel like he's going to not take the next game. Okay, it's possible to get either a Vortex, a Thunderbolt, something to catch. But it's so hard against a character as fast as Wolverine Laura. Her ability to dash in and press a button. Her dashing medium is going to hit more of the screen than Dante trying to press light in less time. <laughs> it's it's so scary when a character can just do that. Um, my friend Lingas here from Guadalajara used to call Hagar's crouch medium the cyber dulcim. 
because he's like it reaches full screen and i'm like i guess yeah and, and when a character like so fast like laura can do that it's just terrifying and, and xeno is gonna need an adaptation really soon stars wesker i'm not sure uh the nemesis t-type is actually an interesting adaptation i i do feel that Deadpool kind of struggles with Nemesis a little bit because of the angles that he can reach. So let's see what happens. Uh, so, Kevin, is there a double mod status? Because I'm curious what Zeno is doing here, because that Nemesis against Deadpool, I, I have confidence in Psychelix's ability to never interact with this character and shoot him into oblivion from the opposite side of the screen. Are you guys oh, no. familiar with um, alternate win conditions? Yes. For example, in Yu-Gi-Oh, you can win yep. by uh, like the normal rules, or you can just get Exodia in your hand, right? Mm -hmm. In Marvel, there's an alternate win condition. It's called the Mexican Victory Rule, and it's it happens in every major. If you can land the Nemesis level three on something that is alive, whether it's a plant, a dog, or another player, you win the tournament even if it's casuals. So maybe oh. Zeno was trying to go for the alternate win con right there. Oh no, he already won. Zeno won the tournament earlier this evening and acquired mod status as a bonus. It, we're just playing the rest of this. This is all casual because he hit the level three earlier this evening. And uh, it, it was a grand culmination of all of his hard work, but it looks like he's gonna need even more than that. Because even though he won in spirit, he unfortunately is not winning in practice against his dead two right now. You know, it's a it's a beauty competition that coincidentally lines up with who keeps playing at the end of this casual. But there's there's no money in the marble. <laughs> it's just a beauty tournament. I sometimes you just gotta do it for the style points. Even if Zeno's already won the tournament, I want to <laughs> see it in the graphic, like the actual placements. But winner, Zeno. Reason, Nemesis level three. I've only been able to land it on a plant that was almost dead that I have in my backyard, and Frankie G. Those are the only two people I've ever landed a, a uh, Nemesis level 3 on. What a reset. Oh, and this Nemesis not going to land level 3s or anything else here. Psychelic not a plant. It turns out instead, uh, some fauna instead of the floor gets the mix up on Huster but doesn't confirm it. Uh, Laura is one of those characters that you can super jump into a button, then confirm with a ground bounce, which is pretty scary but it looks like you may not get to confirm into anything if Stars Wester gets in here, and um, I lied. Stars Wester is not getting in anywhere. Did you know that even after the Flash, you can just jab Nemesis out of his level 3 because it's not invincible? Yeah, it's not invincible. It's not immediate after Flash. It's just profound sadness. Uh, I believe that that was a quote from the Street Fighter 4 with a... Uh, with a guy that, that I, was yeah. just, like talking about Nemesis. It probably oh. Nemesis' is lifetime achievements. It's just struggling a lot. Psychelic playing a very lame game. I feel that when you play Nemesis, you have to establish that you have no morals or, you know, preoccupations in the world and you have to go in like crazy just to show that you're a scary person and Zeno wasn't doing that so Psychilic just took advantage the entire way it was just very defensive gameplay and, and baiting out you know the bad matchup right there from Zeno uh, unfortunately tears are a thing and, and Psychilic advances into the loser semi-finals of our tournament and I do believe we're gonna have a, a very Canadian match in our next match we would just it would just be very emotional whoever pissed off the other first one so maybe that's the edge that king carlos has over joker you know he just knows how to anger his brother in bracket and if you can throw someone off their mental game you can beat them this is true uh though kevin i believe we have the name swap because uh joker with a bit more of the marvel 2 sentinel and uh carlos with the uh thanos but not gonna have the thanos for very long oh so many drones that's How so do you scary. feel, like, since you have uh, access to drones on point, he has different directions. I bet you could do both the upward-moving drones and the downward-moving drones simultaneously to get the hit there. Speaking of drones, uh, Carlos tagging in his own robot right here to try and pressure Joker. And I do believe that it doesn't matter if it's MBC2 Sentinel or not. Zero does pressure 
Sentinel really, really well. Uh, gonna put in a bad matchup, but the confirmation is nice. And this super looks so whack, so just tagging into the Shockwave to get rid of the missiles, but not all of them. One manages to get through. Oh my goodness. That mix was so real and not something that Zero was ready for. Well, what's going to happen to the Seattle? I don't know. The defense is nice here from Carlos, but the offense is way more oppressive here from Joker. Let's see what happens. Oh, gets the jab, but doesn't quite confirm it. And oh, Doom are going to get punished right here. X Factor into this Ruptor. Thanos is bleeding right here. And I think there's a reason the X-Men weren't introduced in the MCU at the same time as the Avengers. Because Magneto could just rip Thanos into pieces if he wanted. Let's see what happens here. It's looking mad canonical. And this Doom looking spicy, but gets mixed up by Eric Lencher right here. Uh, Thanos going to have a, his work cut out to him. A lot of health on Joker's team and just not being able to block. The speed is too much. Joker definitely had those confirms on deck. Good stuff for uh, using air dashes with magnetic blast and also the drone placement in order to take things. But King Carlos only needs to get such a tiny amount of momentum before Zero with the missiles can just take over the game. Got a hit but didn't have the confirm there on Marvel Consentment. Is this going to be it though? Because Zero is one of the few characters that's like, oh, 1.25 million health? Ooh. I could kill that. Yeah, e easily too. There's very few characters that can do that, and Joker uh, goes for a scramble right there, but Zero's disjointed limbs are crazy, and oh, that was a nice extension. I like that. That was very, very cool. Definitely one of the clone engine specials right here. We're going to taste the rainbow into the beam, and Thanos should have a strong mix here against Magneto. Going to force something with the missiles, and no, just whips. Very scary stuff. Goes for the gravity squeeze, and maybe a tag to try and get the most out of this. Full combo with Magneto, going to build a decent amount of meter. If X doesn't use Thanos, let's do this, though. One more. Just short of the second bar he needed. Ooh. The respect. You can tell who's the older brother here in this relationship. Wait, which one is the one who's respectful? I don't know if the younger brothers or older brothers are respectful. <laughs> older brothers are the least respectful. Always. <laughs> Younger brothers are, are very respectful. They, they admire their brother until they realize that he's just a Pikachu player. You can just <laughs> go empty jump low. We'll see what happens. Oh, and it looks like King Carlos, will he be the Pikachu player this evening? Or is he going to get the opportunity to play like it's Max 64 where Pikachu is much stronger? Getting the, uh, the opportunity to put in some buttons for Thanos here? You, uh, there's actually a cool uh, interaction between the Smash 64 community and the Marvel community. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a Smash 64 player named Jaime HR. He's from Mexicali, Mexico, and he's one of the best Smash 64 players to ever do it. And he's also a Marvel player. He plays Team Resident Evil. Nemesis, Wesker, and Jill. Nice. Yeah, Super Smash 64, that game is wild, to my understanding. But <laughs> this is actually the closest game that uh, looking much better for Carlos than game one, but still looking like it's pretty in Joker's favor. Uh, yeah. I feel that if you find a way to tag Thanos, then you can abuse those missiles. And oh my goodness, that was a beautiful air-to-air. -air. King Carlos back in it. I don't know if it's going to be enough meter. 15 seconds on the clock, though. Uh, health is starting to become an issue, so maybe you just drag out the combo right here. Goes for the Sphere Flame. I don't know if I agree with that. I think maybe the DHC was the right option there. Oh, this is going to catch, though. And now King Carlos, both of them are at very similar levels of life. Uh, let's see if they're able to do anything in these last two seconds in order to make it happen. Oh my looks like, it looks like Joker takes this, and that was largely that Joker had his character with more red life in the back where it was regenerating. But King Carlos's Zoom was at the point where he already was at max, wasn't getting any extra life back, and that's what secured it for Joker that game. Yeah, it's hard. Um, life is a resource that you can use to your advantage to get positioning until it's not. Then time is a resource. I, I don't mm. even remember who said that. It was in an old like Street Fighter 4 uh, stream back in the days of Justin.tv, but one of the commentators was saying that when you play a fighting game and you play a very big body character, then you can trade your health for positioning. It's okay to lose neutral as long as you push them to the corner, but you have mm -hmm. to hurry up with it. 
because if time comes by, then you're at a big disadvantage. And I feel that's what happened precisely to King Carlos's Thanos right here. And that was one of the worst trades I've ever seen for the MVC2 Sentinel right there. His microwave is not that good. He, he has one of those ones that was built in like the 70s or something. It's gone out. It's, this Magneto box is not functioning properly. But the Magneto that is functioning properly is Joker. Ooh. Managing to get that reset on Carlos in the corner. Uh, America extends, like, Canada is part of North America. So American resets definitely still happen up there. Absolutely, and oh my goodness, Joker is just tap dancing on Carlos. This is getting very, very disrespectful at the moment. Dr. Doom can make this comeback, but it's not going to be easy. This is a happy boo-boo. This is a start, but no. Manages to block, and the raw magnetic... Uh, so the raw hyper grab right there. Things are looking rough. We, we're going to have the shockwave into just level three. No way. He went for the style like that? That's crazy, but ran out of X-Factor. That's an X-Factor only combo, I bet you. Ooh, and it looks like Carlos wants this to be an SVP, but the chance is taken from him. Joker taking it 3-0, and it's from King Carlos from the tournament. But his reward for winning is getting into the Learner Semifinals, where they will fight Psykele. How do you feel about Magneto, Marvel, 2 Cent, and Sentinel? Oh, looks like I'm going to need to hop off to play Winner's Finals against Noel. Good luck and have fun, Noel. Fuck. Tim, what are you expecting for Shadow Lady? Maybe messing with a different assist? I, I want to see what comes by here, and I think the point war definitely determines a lot of things. Oh, and the, the Captain Corridor right there, very, very scary. I think that Modok has to play a grounded game in this scenario just to avoid as many uh, spell charges here for Dormammu as possible. And also checking um, the Doctor Doom assist calls. But Noel is playing very, very evasive, and... I feel when, when you play such a fundamentally sound player as Noel, you have to be very, very careful. What's up, Nick Bad? <laughs> Hello. What the hell is Noel doing playing Palette Swap? Oh, wait, no, this is Clone Engine. Yeah, I know. So, well, so the lore the chat told me was that Noel signed up thinking it was regular Marvel, and then he was like, I'll figure it out. And if you figure it out, he's in the winner's finals. Yeah, th I'd say that's figuring it out. I just has been playing Modoc. It very much plays for a love of zoning characters. Because he, sometimes he's just a little struggling to get kills because their combos are so short with Modoc. Oh, I said that the standard uh, pick character plus Shadow Lady plus Captain Marvel. <laughs> yep. Oh my goodness, and it's it's quite close. We're gonna see the DHC right here into Dormammu. Uh, I wonder if Captain Marvel has a way to deal with the stalking flare. Goes for the Shadow Lady. Very interesting stuff, but the flame carpet covering Iceman right there. Oh my goodness. Uh, Noel's character unfamiliarity here could punish uh, in this situation as Iceman bobbies out. No, gets snapped. And the mix is so scary right here. Isis Sarah trying to get in, trying to chase down this Dormammu. And when you fight such an evasive and fundamentally sound player, uh, like Noel, you have to go to where Noel wants to go rather than where he is because he's always thinking two or three steps ahead, as you can see with all that movement. And Isis Era is crumbling here onto the Dormammu pressure. What? Nani? Tiny hitbox again. Dosta. I was like, man, Captain Marvel is just a bullshit Magneto. <laughs> Not bullshit Magneto. Oh my goodness, that was scary. Was that a cross up? You know, she stays in front, but that's very plus, so if I see Sarah lands it grounded, we can just keep mixing. What a scary character. But oh, she's terrifying. Okay, and now she gets the cami move set with doll mode. Doll mode sounds like a nightmare, and it's looking like a nightmare as well, as Isis Sarah gets the lead here 1-0 against Noel, but Noel putting up a valiant fight now. I wonder if you switch to the double missiles assist once more. What's the character? <laughs> okay, you see Dormammu. Dormammu, Doom, MBC2, Sentinel actually sounds terrifying. Evil Ryu, okay.
Phoenix. Okay, I can dig with that. Because Evil Ryu is just going to be like a meter battery, if anything. And he has he transfers. <laughs> yeah, he transfers a lot of the basic fundamentals for Ryu over. Uh oh. I do appreciate how Noel's like one of the very few, you know, there's not that many Phoenix players, but actively uses the Phoenix assist, does not care. I feel that just the the meta being the way it is, it's harder to punish an assist you're never really looking out for. And Noel takes advantage of that. Because you just don't expect the Phoenix player to call it. So this could be an annotation here for Isis Era trying to get the chase down. She's very smart about adaptations and picks up on patterns really easily, so I'd like to see what happens here and I think the Captain Corridor assist is so scary for Modok, but it's not scary if you're getting blessed by their mama. Spending the meter right there, knowing that that's a big part of the game plan right there for Isis Era. Oh, look at that. Thatsu assist just doing exactly what he needs to do. Oh my goodness. Is this dead? Oh, lady. Uh, a lot of bar all the meter, probably. Oh, so no reset. Here. Wow, that was weird. That was also Ooh. weird. I don't even know what's going on. I didn't see what's going on. A safe uh, DHC? Yeah, beam super into Captain Marvel's install. That's crazy. Just controlling with the air, but here we go. It's very close now to this Phoenix. Oh my goodness. You can just feel the tension as, as Dark Phoenix is gonna come by. Dormammu's still in the back to tag her out to safety, but Noel just fighting it out knows that the, the risk for losing neutral is actually a reward. And that's just one of the greatest feelings on Earth. Avoiding the liberation? What though? invasion? Is there anti Phoenix tech here? Oh hell, probably is no nice. Just missiles, Sarah. I think. <laughs> There must be a reason behind the install, right? Yeah, it gives you the ability to swap fast between the two movesets. And you get a unique follow-up of all your specials. Oh my lord. We're going to the 1-1 one -one scenario right here. I see Sarah just looking to get that pressure on Dormammu. I feel that the early uh, game plan is the most important for, for this matchup in particular. Modok has to exert pressure, and Noel also knows this, so he tries to get rid of Isis Era's Modok fast. Uh, he knows how much she c can do with the character and, and the pressure right there. Shadow Lady just being so grounded makes it a bit easier to build that bar you want. Oh, the liberation, so tricky by Noel. And the unblockable, that's so unfortunate when there's an accidental high-low because of the flame carpet. Has one more on the stock here. Bring down the meteor. Yep, get Tatsu. <laughs> It'd be like that. And yeah, no one tell Noel that Evil Ryu has a really good OTG. <laughs> Is the the side coaching? Sorry, I'm pretty sure I've lost more to Isis Sarah than I've lost to Noel. You can call it biased if you want. <laughs> I mean, bias makes for interesting commentary, as Yipes would say. Yes, they're really unable to find snap opportunities, so all this damage is just building bar. Ooh. Is this enough? Gonna go for the tag, yeah? Evil Ryu staying alive. BG's reference right there. Oh my goodness, what a catch. And the snap on Phoenix. Oh, but nice defense from Noel. Snapping Phoenix is um, very hard because she comes in a little bit higher than most Terra Dash characters. So a lot of people miss timing on their meaties because of that. It's like a little known fact for uh, the defense that Gene does get to enjoy. And Noel just getting the what hit. What a confirm. That was ridiculous. 
You can oh, tell no. that this man is built different. Ooh, that was a fantastic read by Noel. Also a fantastic drop. With great uh, reads comes great drops, Uncle Ben would say. Evil Ryu oh. so close to dead now. Oh my goodness. This is still somehow even if Captain Marvel gets the hit here, but we're all gonna make sure that this character is gone in qualifying himself into the grand finals in what I I believe is his first clone engine tournament. Um this is the, the mark of a true professional right there. I never get tired of saying this, but Noel is one of the players match. Joker Four. is terrifying, and he has two sentinels. Selic, uh, Selic <laughs> is the homie, but it's two. Ugh, it's Joker on M Sentinel 2, or NBC 2 Sentinel. Such a scary character. Oh my goodness. Like, Gillick's getting vibe checked right here by Joker. He just mints meat everywhere. Joker isn't people. playing this game. He's playing NPC too. Sometimes that's all you need to play. That's what the, the character says in its title. And to everybody at Press 4, special shout out to Fetus, to Senor Hamon, and Lux8. Um, all you had to do was Press 4 and believe. And speaking of believing, Psychilic is living on a prayer right here with the Deadpool. I'm gonna go for the DHC. I wonder if this is gonna be enough because of the Laura DHC right here. Does she make it in time? Oh, perfectly. And now this could be the turnaround because Deadpool being alive still puts uh, things kind of even. And the Laura pressure is scary, especially because Sentinel from NBC2 gets hit right here. Ooh, Ooh the reset. I guess Joker wasn't Joker's expecting up. that. You know, you don't know where they're gonna reset you if you don't know where they're gonna combo you. I wonder if Cyclic actually plays Laura, or is he just doing like uh, Laura, or, you know, X twenty three combos out of memory? Uh, that was he's sick. been labbing recently. It it looks lab. It doesn't look like an X twenty three combo. Oh my goodness! There's no way. In the face. <laughs> There's no way that was gonna go through that Cyclic thought. Nice Gets throw. the grab though. This should be a dead Sentinel. I would spend the X. Goes for a reset, catches Joker mashing, making a statement right here is like killing. Good kill. Like the most optimal kill. Keep it simple. I like how they kind of get like zooped to the ground during that super. It's like, hey, I'm airborne, never mind. <laughs> Imagine if it restanded. That's one of the oh, mechanics in Marvel that I feel like are underexplored. Restands. But it's probably for the better of the game, because it, it would just be really, really cheap. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. I've done it on my stream a couple of times, but Spencer can up grapple you right as Strider Vajra hits you. So they get hard knockdown while they're being grappled, and you can restand them after a hard knockdown and go for a mix. Mm -hmm. But that is the only consistent way I know of making the game bug the fuck out. Spencer's grapple assist is so glitchy. It can yeah. cause the, the Skywalker glitch too, where it just raises the floor for, player, for the player that gets hit, trading with Spencer grapple assist and dying at the same time. It's really hard to emulate. But it happened in tournament once at a festival of fights number one, against, me against Pinoy. The the replay should be somewhere in Jamal Seto's uh, USB. Oh no, too quick. Psychilic like looking commanding right here, but Joker gets the hit and this could be a turnaround. Especially with the tough to deal with MBC2 mix. I would spend the three and kill her. You have to. You 
Dante is scary. Dante without X Factor is a little less scary. Five bars though. Let's see what he can cook. Oh, not much. Oh, Joker's showing mercy. Oh my goodness. Never mind. <laughs> Maybe trying Playing to with get in a Helix head. It's part of the mental game as well. But you do have to seal the deal right here. You can't let a player like Sykilic get away with, with his Dante. I feel like this first interaction is what makes or breaks this game. If Psychilic can get in on Sentinel, things are getting spooky. And, and the reason I think that Deadpool does well against Sentinel is because Sentinel's main weakness is characters that can just jab under him. Can't really cover that angle well. So if Psychilic just gets under, it, it could be curtains. Also, there's a mental condition here. when how many bolos come at you and you have to block every single one of them because you can't avoid them. Yeah, you, you, you don't avoid one and this is what happens. So dead character and then a mix-up with Jam Session and Laura. Terrifying. But Joker escapes. Oh my goodness. That's a really good assist for Deadpool. Pushes you all the way uh, full screen. Much like Rapid Slash. That's one of uh, Rapid Slash's main strengths in the neutral, I would say. Okay, Dante? Almost. Could have been. Oh, and that trade! Very unfavorable. Psychilic tried to get under the Sentinel, but wasn't quite fast enough, so the jump age got in. Now the Magneto for the mix, and just trying to escape with Laura. I agree. Oh my goodness, the scrambles are everywhere. Dante's risking his life, and I wonder if Psychilix looking for a bad assist call for a team super right here. Could be, could be a possibility with the Dante. Oh, that was the prime place to do it, but Joker gets the confirmation. Nick, Tim, is this going to go down to the wire? Of course. One more chance. Maybe X early to get some health back on Dante before he comes in. Great no way. Oh no. Jet stream? When the stream is jet? <laughs> I can't believe this. Acid rain? What's the mix? Oh, just hold back and go for a cross. Damn. Oh no. Playing with fire right there is psychilic. What? 2-2-1. Two, two, I think Joker made the right call with the... I think he tried to do a fan grab. Just... Dante did Dante things. Oh, this could be a dead Laura. This could be a dead Laura. Okay, protected correctly there by Psychilic. And there's just so much pressure right here on Joker's side uh, that Psychilic really has to take a moment here to breathe and rethink the game plan now that the health has been lost on Laura's side. I like the grenades, keeping the drones honest. But you can't get Psychic when you're zoning. You have to be reactive. Psychic zoning leads into getting punished and dying most of the time. Just like that. Early spending of the X, you have to make the most of it if you're Joker. A minute, hit both. Oh, didn't know the actual combo right there for the birthday. That's one thing with... um. Clone engine characters, you, you never really know. Oh, not the counter. <laughs> Their data is always changing. That's true, this game can get patched. <laughs> that kind of hurt. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like games that don't get patched. I feel like it rewards passion. And I feel like games that get patched make lazier players. But that's just my hot birthday. take of the week. So everyone's going to get more lazy when Akuma comes out Street Fighter 6 because we're just going to hit Mal's back. Yeah, because now it's just like, oh, this is a bad matchup. I'll just wait for the buffs. Yeah, if it's like, this is a bad matchup, I'll make sure it's a less bad matchup by being a better player. And Psychilic, getting the confirm right there from full screen, that was deceptively hard. 
It all comes down to this mix-up. Acid Rain, Maggie's birthday. Oh my goodness, that was disgusting. That was absolutely nasty. I've never seen that. Wow. Holy hell. Wow. Psychilic is having a seizure in the chat right now. Because he too is subscribed to twitch.tv slash Avengers. So don't... Strider 2099, but he doesn't have Vodra anymore, so it kind of defeat uh, the purpose of, you know, uh, Psychilic picking him. Oh my goodness. I feel that Modoc actually gives Deadpool a lot of trouble. Because the Kids' Choice Awards and the Barrier force like risky approaches from Deadpool. So you really need that Vajra. I, I'm not a fan of Jam Session precisely because of this. Modoc can just vibe check it, especially with the, with the assist that Isisera has picked. She's such a strong competitor and so knowledgeable that uh, Psychilic is just getting vibe checked right here. Baby legs everywhere. Uh, this is looking like Toy Story 1 with the, the crazy kid's house, the dismantled toys. Uh, Psychilic trying to get Wolverine in right here, Laura Wolverine. But Isisair just keeping Psychilic's approach very, very honest with the Modoc. Deadpool down, looking rough. Dante down as well. Oh, but this could be something. This could be a birthday. Uh -oh. No, a bad X right there. Oh, this is so scary. Command grab. Is this a combo? Is the ground bounce still? He does. Oh, well, you cannot be dropping against a player of Icy Sarah's caliber. She's such a strong player. You have five, so you can just fatal claw earlier in that combo and get that kill. Oh my goodness. 1 0 for Isis Air and Psychilic playing the same team, but that just felt convincing in a way I've never particularly seen before. Uh, I wonder if, if you go for a snap here, if you're Psychilic, or if you go for a reset here on the Modoc. Went for a reset, but at what cost? How do you get the hit and are losing anyway? <laughs> How do you get punched in the face to still win? Yeah. That's the Mike Tyson approach to, to gaming, you know? Everybody has a plan until they get punched. Nick, Tim, uh, do you guys think that Psychilic can bring this one back? Hasn't been able to get past the Modoc yet, but it's looking like a first in this scenario. I mean, I, Modoc yes. is there just to be annoying. This is when the real, like, actual match begins, when Shadow Lady and Captain Marvel come out to play. Oh, is this where the where the boss music starts for Isis Sarah? Essentially, it's phase two. Uh, <laughs> is this a Dark Souls Solo. scenario? No, this is an Elden Ring scenario. Oh, no. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. Dante's bleeding. Deadpool needs to make something happen. A Sekiro scenario, says Kevin. Oh, yes. Shadows are definitely dying twice tonight. Oh, but Psychilic does get the uh, confirm right here, and we have seen the nasty Dante mix-ups. I bet we're going to see something disgusting right now. I can just sense it. You can tell that million dollars is intentional. Nope, that was whack. Psychilic, I'm never hyping you up again. <laughs> he tried I, to kill with that bar and ended up just blowing his timings. But this will do it. Oh, this won't do it. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> Psychilic deserves to lose for that disappointing mix-up. I'm just going to say 2-0. 2-0 for Isis era. Very well deserved. How do I hype you up for like 30 seconds and you just do crouch medium? I can't believe it. I would have liked to see the Vajra assist. I think that Dante is not the right play in the Modoc matchup. Because Modoc just enjoys sniping Dante every time, just counter calling. You can tell that Isis Sarah is reacting, so why, why would you play that game where you're not going to come out on top? You have less uh, projectile priority, you know, things are just more complicated. You have to put on the pressure somehow and Vajra is the way.
Oh my goodness, Deadpool's just getting melted with every approach. That Shadow Lady assist is a war crime. Once more! He's gonna go for the chip right here. Psychelic trying to tag out. Gonna be enough to punish. And this is a full screen confirm. I wonder if Modok's dead from this because there's no scaling. Oh, barely. If uh, Cyclic had uh, one more bar, he could have done the quote unquote level two and killed him, but oh well. Shadow Lady has a beam super? Yeah. Yep. I guess it, this truly is canon to Marvel 1. Yeah. <laughs> She's pretty much that. Yep, I can see it. Oh my goodness. Wolver Wolverine Lara gets blessed. Oh, not stepping on him. Oh. Okay, install? Oh, the layers are there. She also has Cami doll mode for some reason. <laughs> yep. So she's two characters, essentially. This is a cheap character. I respect it. She's Cami with a bean super. But for the Marvel 1 characters, um, I am uh, very partial to Orange Hulk just because he sounds so educated. He's like, let's rock! Like, you just want to be his friend because he, he went to college and stuff and he's just smart. Psychilic needs to do something smart to stay in this, though, or this is going to be the end of his tournament run. But hell, I play Thing and he keeps yelling about his on. Oh, no. I do commentate every game, Luxaith. I just don't have much time because I live in a third world country, like Kevin said. Speaking of third world, I want to see a third world mix up, something very disgusting. That was it. That was definitely very rudimentary. Road. Oh my goodness, the no mix mix. Psychilic staying in this. Actually bringing it back. Oh no, six seconds on the clock. I should have shut my mouth. I should have shut it. What about even now? Oh, oh that no. might have done it. Wow. Barely. See, I knew Surge was Mexican. I knew he could do it. He did double Helmbreaker. His blood started burning. I, I always uh, give Kevin Ha, you know, uh, shit because we were watching Demon Slayer. And there's this one scene in Demon Slayer where he's like, Oh yeah, my dad used to smoke crack when I was a kid. And he just gets a power up. That's literally what happened to say kill it. He remembered, yeah, I'm Mexican. Time to do two Helmbreakers in a row. I don't and know it why that <laughs> Yeah, Charcoal Deku is not my favorite uh, anime, definitely. I like Jujutsu Kaisen way more. Uh, Isis Hera, though, getting rid of the Deadpool and Laura bleeding. Is this Dante against the world? And we'll be Laura here. I say it's just literally playing Street Fighter 6 dash drive rush low. It's plus two, yeah. Have you read the latest chapter of Jujutsu Chrysler? Of course I have, Senor Hamon. I read it weekly. And it's great. And also scary. Get a notification whenever a new chapter's out. I do. My notification is my friend's. They're always like, bro, did you read? And, I, and I'm and i like, uh, I guess I am about to. But I will never spoil such a great series. So to change the topic, I do believe that unless Isis Era drops this, things are looking very hard to deal with for Psychilic. And Isis Era hasn't forgiven until now. Just like High School Musical, this could be the start of something new. There's got to be something with Clone Engine. I've never seen Isis oh, drop so many combos before. Like, and I've only been here for like, what, 30 minutes? She more recently has been having latency issues, which is interesting because normally she doesn't get Oh any. no, she no longer has 3 MS. And in the immortal words of Dead X Pride, Damn kid, died with X? You don't want to die with X. Psychilic didn't spend it and... You know, X Factor and money are like water dashing. 
Oh, he has a better fight. And a lot more knockback. You can cancel, for example, Flames of the Fall Team, like also uh, Bolt. He probably won't make bounce. much of an impact this round. Yep. I think he's also squishier. I can't really say for sure. Barely so, but I think. So he's not strange, he's stranger. Yeah. So there's a third mod on the way called Strangest. Oh, wait. Who's developing Strangest? I hope it's Tabs. He's my favorite. I'm very partial to Tabs. Okay, um... <laughs> Among Shadows is developing Strangest? Then it's definitely gonna be something I don't wanna see. Shadows literally only makes mods that are Nightmare Fuel. He's the Boruto of mod creators. But I love Thomas. The, the, the Wesker assist that is hyper. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Doom can always come back. Doom is the best grappler in the game. 100%. Can somebody ban Senor Hamon for what he just wrote? I cannot tolerate those types of hate speeches in the chat. I'm gonna have to ask the mods to, to do their job, please. Hey, I got you. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. 1-0 for Isisera. Stranger is danger. It, it, it's been taken away. And Noel is going to have to go for an adaptation. I did like the pointer, Mamu. I was saying you guys know the golden rule. Remora, but oh well. That's almost his worth. I promise whenever I have that amount of points that I'll spend them on Remora for you. You cover my back, I'll cover yours, Nick. Always. Fetus did 50,000 minutes? That's insane. I don't think humans can even live 50,000 minutes. 300 seconds, okay. <laughs> 300 seconds? That's fair. Can somebody calculate how much time in real life is 50,000 minutes? At least one second. Can... Wolf has too much power on this stream? No, it's just basic human decency. Y you don't say you like Boruto, you're fine. You can say everything else you want. Just like Noel is just playing the neutral however he wants, putting all the pressure here on Icy Sarah, forcing the X rather than the tag, and oh my goodness. I think Noel discovered the corridor assist, and this is the scariest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh. Here. Wait, 50,000 minutes is just 35 days? That's not as long as I thought. We should make a Marvel combo video called 50,000 minutes. And Sounds it's just, ominous. It's 35 days of just Marvel combos. Noel is back in command. I mean, this Shadow Lady assist, it's looking like it's too much. This might be over. This is so scary. Such a fundamentally sound player like Noel with that corridor assist. I would never want to deal with this in a thousand years. Paying off. Oh, that's sorry, I was dealing with something else. I didn't see Noel pick Shadow Lady. Yep. Second time he's picked Shadow Lady. Oh my goodness, Modok's almost chipped. Oh, good thing Noah doesn't know about a, uh, you know, power up Colossus assist. Oh, Colossus is in? Yeah. Yep. I, I want to play that character. We're gonna we might have a Colossus uh, learning stream. Do you know who else got to figure uh, out for at least with Colossus? I I know how to play Colossus in Marvel too. So it's basically the same. But Hinata from Rival Schools got released with Colossus. Oh, nice. I like Rival Schools, it's a fun game. Well, you play Rival Schools in this, you have Batsu, Sakura, and Hinata. 
Sakura is such a scary character in that game. It's one of the most Kusoge fighting games I've ever seen at a high level, but it's very fun. Noel is just in command. Just Dormammu, Shadow Lady, Phoenix. What could go wrong with this team? Two scary ladies. <laughs> Maybe Noel's team name. Two scary ladies. Two <laughs> scary ladies. Bit of scary girl right squad. There, but... Beat bonfire. Oh my goodness. Noel just running away, timing out Isis era. Knowing that there is no risk, you just call the assist and run. Oh, Ooh, there you go. Hold up. Went for a grab, very smart, but did not work out. Got electrocuted right there. Noel is looking strong. This could be tournament point. This could be the 3-1. The if modoc has gone, things are looking very scary right here. I wish more people would play Power Swap based off uh, what Fruity said. But it's not everyone's cup of tea. I get it. I mean, no, uh... I want to play it, but I'm very stupid at installing the mods, so I need help. Because I didn't finish elementary school. It would be nice, and, and I'd love to support it. Kevin will do it for free. No, Kevin always wants a little hug or a kiss, but it's fine. He sent me the idiot proof tutorial and it wasn't TA Wolf proof. So, what does that say about me? Actually, yeah, we'll just send him the files, Kevin. Just send him the entire package folder. <laughs> it's TA Wolf proof now? We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> the entire Load is there. You guys underestimate how stupid I am. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll get Kevin to put a remote desktop on your computer so he can literally do it for you. I mean, if you have Windows, it's one baked in. He can take my personal data, no problem. As yeah. Noel takes the personal W. Oh here, my no. god. It, it might still not be over, but it's definitely looking terrifying. Oh, there's a chance. There's a chance. Oh, just barely. <laughs> not, with, not with Shadow There's Radius. A oh. oh, you had to confirm that one. It might be Jover. It might be Jover. Oh, it is my Jover. I Sarah's like, oh man, is this what I do to people with I with Shadow Lady Assist? Uh, that was rough to watch. Noel is just Noel's like I found immaculate. Noel's like I found my clone engine character. <laughs> He did, and he won. Wow, that was actually terrifying. Insane stuff right there from Noel.